All right. I don't know what happened, guys, but thanks for those joining me live. Those that will be joining me on archive. I mean, it's unbelievable. I don't know what happened. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know what happened. Right? But um, I'm back. I lost my feet. Right? I know Kelly had issues with his hangout as well, his side of it. So I don't know what happened with hangouts in general. I know this was a mess outage. You know, but but nonetheless, I'm back. Okay, I'm back, and we're back on the attack. All right, unbelievable. Make sure you go, uh, guys, share the video, please. Those that were here, that way everybody gets to notice that that we're back. Right? Let me let me do a sound check. We're good. All right. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna follow my own advice and uh, share my own video, right? Did the super check go in? Are you talking about the two dollar one from earlier? I got it. They were talking about another one. I'm not sure. Uh, Kelly, I did send you a link, by the way. All right, let's go. I don't know what happened, man. I lost connection, so we're starting over again. Unbelievable. We got this fight going on with Gonzalez and Avila. Blue trunks is Gonzalez, Avila, gold trunks. Avila throwing a jab real well. I'm surprised, again, that there's not more people in this crowd, man. I'll tell you that right now. Cali said there's not much going on in California today. <laughs> right, not that side anyway. I fucking hate how the zone doesn't keep the names, bro. Right after the knockout, man. I had to have gotten it. I just, I'm, for, I'm sorry, bro. I lost the connection. Um, I'll check right now. I do know that if they don't go through, they refund you. I know that. I'm going to wait on Cali here. Man, well, I don't know what the hell is going on here. But Hangouts fucked up bad, right? Gonna have to get a notepad here. I usually have a pen and paper, but unbelievable. I can't believe I lost the feed, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's crazy. No, we're good to go. It didn't go through. Okay. Well, nonetheless, we're back on. You know, um, I'm going to let this round pass, man, because I'm doing so much on my end right now. And I'm sharing this video and all that. So bear with me, guys. Unbelievable. Hangouts already fucking up, bro. Better not fuck up in the main event. I'll tell you that. I'll lose my shit. Right? Now, that was in the zone. That was hangouts. Hangouts went out. Can you guys tell me the last thing you heard? What was the last thing you heard before I went out? I just hate it, bro, because now, now I know whoever does a search, Vargas Cometa, live play-by-play, -play, it's been... Taken down like like it's fucking it's it's annoying but it is what it is what are you gonna do we're still starting early all right the zone needs to work a lot on its um production man as a terrible production 
I don't know. Callie got my um. Did Callie get my link? I'm not sure. You fucked this whole thing up. We'll do play by play starting the second round. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let's go. Center of the ring. Avila with the gold trunks. Gonzalez with the blue. Double jab, and he gets clipped with a hook upstairs. Does Avila. Gonzalez and Avila are fighting this fight at mid-range right now. Double jab by Avila and Gonzalez comes upstairs with the right. Right by Avila. Avila gets clipped with the right hand, comes back, but those punches get blocked though. Jab, jab, mid range fight here. Right hand by Avila. That was upstairs. Jab, jab by Avila. He's circling to his left. Jab, jab by Avila. Again, he gets clipped with a right hand. Avila trying to establish that jab. They miss jabs. The aggressor is Gonzalez. Avila moving to his left. Circling to his left. All right, they get tangled up. They both miss shots. They both miss shots again. What's the last thing you guys heard in the last thing, by the way? All right, here we go. Avila is backing up. He comes through. Trying to pierce through that guard of Gonzalez. Avila moving to his right now. Gonzalez stalking. Right hand by Gonzalez. He's keeping it mid-range. Not stuffing his work. I'll give him that. Jab, jab, cross by Avila. But that all landed on glove. I'll tell you that. Avila ducks low when he gets in. He gets out of the way. He goes to his right. He's trying to duck low for that. A right hand, but we'll see if he can land it. Avila landing all gloves here. But Jed is trying to get in with that right. He is landing it. I'll tell him that. Right hand by Avila over the guard. Of Gonzalez. And here we go. Double jab by Avila inside. He throws a jab to the body. Jab upstairs. Time. That's the bell. It's a no. I, I hate it. I hate separating these fucking. I like to do the whole card on one, you know, video. But what are you going to do? Nothing we can do now, right? So stop crying about it, D-Style. Had a good conversation in the chat going. I mean, goddamn. Let it go. <laughs> well, get the camera on in a little bit. I'm just letting the computer cool down. So. I'm charging it, so I want it to charge faster, etc. Right, they're about to start the round. Here we go. Ding, ding. Send to the ring. Avila with the gold trunks. Gonzalez with the blue. Jabbing upstairs. Steps to the body by Gonzalez. 
Jab upstairs by Avila. He goes for a three-punch, four-punch combination, all blocked by the gloves. One might have gotten in. Avila landing on gloves. Gutierrez feeling himself. Gutierrez ducks low from those punches. Good movement as he moves right. Every time he ducks low, Avila gets clipped with a with a left. Both guys posturing. Body shots by Avila. He comes through. He's trying to pierce through the guard. Nothing getting through yet, but those body shots are getting in. You got to go to the body if you want to have him lower that guard. They both miss shots here. Even to the body they miss. Jab upstairs by, you know, Gonzalez. Avila goes with three punches to the body. Gonzalez holds the left hand. Avila lets, he, he, he makes him release it as he lands more to the body. Body shot with his left hand, Gonzalez. Gonzalez comes in with a cross. Avila circling to his left. Right hand by Avila, left to the body. Gonzalez comes in, he misses the three punches there. Decent head movement by Avila. Nice, all right. Right hand. Another right hand by Avila as he's getting stalked by Gonzalez. Gonzalez can't quite catch him here. I feel like Avila is winning this round. Three punch combination by Avila. He keeps moving. He's definitely the boxer in his fight. While Gonzalez is the aggressor, they exchange jabs. They exchange jabs again. More movement to his left does Avila. He makes Gonzalez missed the, the hook. He's moving to his left some more. They exchange jabs again. That's crazy. I never seen dudes exchange jabs that many times in one round. That is insane. Right? I did send a, a link to Kelly Enigma. We'll try to get everybody back on here. It is annoying. I swear to God. As you come in, throw a jab to the like button and share the video. Let people know D Styles back on. Carson, California. I believe they said that was a stub hub center. Filling up little by little. Bunch of Gonzalez fans in the crowd. I'll tell you what, they're getting some shade now, so it's not that bad in terms of the sun. Here we go. Jab. Jab by Gonzalez. Avila comes in, throwing to the guard of Gonzalez. He goes to the body, doing a really good job, man. He throws some hard punches to the guard, and he keeps throwing to the body. Jab by Gonzalez. Avila trying to get close here. No cigar. Avila gets a right hand upstairs. He throws through jabs. Gonzalez goes to the body. Gutierrez. I mean, I'm sorry. Avila responds with two body shots. What's going on here? The ref stops the action momentarily. We're back at it. Double jab landed by Avila and a jab by Gonzalez. Avila comes back. He throws a three-punch combination, gets one through the guard. But Gonzalez is not deterred. He keeps pressuring with that high guard. Right hand by Gonzalez. Right body shot by Gonzalez. Right hand by Gonzalez upstairs. 
Abida goes back to his jab. Jab by Gonzalez. The exchange. Momentarily. Body shots by Avila. Right to the body. Left upstairs by Avila. He's still getting stalked. Gonzalez goes to the body. Goes upstairs. Right, right to the body. By upstairs, I'm sorry. By Gonzalez. Right upstairs by Gonzalez. Left by Gonzalez. Body shot by Avila. Still stalking. Right hand by Gonzalez. Another right hand by Gonzalez. Two punch combination by Avila. Avila's backing up. Gonzalez throwing. He missed here. Body shot to, to the right side. With the right hand, I'm sorry. By left hand upstairs by Gonzalez still. Gonzalez on the offense. Avila trying to fight him off the ropes. But Gonzalez keeps him on the ropes. He pushes him back. That's where he wants him. The ref separates him. God damn. Back to the center of the ring. Gonzalez starts stalking again. Jab by Avila. Jab to the body by Gonzalez. Gonzalez upstairs. Double jab. Avila head movement. He's using his waist to move down. Making Gonzalez miss a little bit. Gonzalez missing some shots. Gonzalez with an uppercut with his right. Gonzalez is giving Avila no breathing room. None. Left and a right by Gonzalez. Left and a right by Gonzalez. A right by Gonzalez. Avila backing up. That's the bell. That is the bell. It looked even, but he has separated himself from the race. Can Avila catch up? Can he? We will see. Go fighting cars in California right now. He's giving Avila no breathing room. None. That was a nice right hand. And another right. That was beautiful. They're showing the replays there. Man, Carson, California, where you at? Some boxing in your side of town. All right, here we go. Double jab. Landed. Right hand by Gonzalez. Gonzalez is still stalking. Double jab by Avila, but it's not deterring the man. You need to do more than the jab. Right hand finally by Avila. And then he comes back with the right. Does Gonzalez. Backs him up. Avila throwing. Trying to get him off him. He doesn't stop. Gonzalez still pressuring. Gonzalez landing 57% of his shots, of power shots. Goes to the body. Another body upstairs. One, two upstairs. Uppercut by Gonzalez. Right hand by Avila. Gonzalez comes right back with a right. Avila with body shots. Tries to get an uppercut upstairs. It misses. Gonzalez pressuring right and by Gonzalez, he misses the hook. Gonzalez still pressuring on one, two. Gonzalez pressuring some more. He goes to the body. Gonzalez pressuring. He doesn't stop. He's relentless. He goes to the body some more. The ref stops the action momentarily. The check on the face of Avila. We keep going. What the hell is that, ref? Not even a cut, bro. Right? Jab to the body. Attempted by Gonzalez. Gonzalez gets hit to one-two by Avila. Avila backing up, though. Body shot. Right hand upstairs. And a left upstairs by Gonzalez. Gonzalez with a right upstairs. And a hook. And another right by Gonzalez on the inside. Uppercut by Gonzalez. Left hook by Gonzalez. And a right down goes to a knee, Avila. Goes down. 
Avila backing up. Gonzalez is relentless. They're shoulder to shoulder. He doesn't stop the pressure. Jab by Gonzalez. Hook. They're in the inside. 21 seconds to go. Jab and a hook by Gonzalez. Left by Gonzalez. Right by Gonzalez. Left and a right upstairs. Hook by Gonzalez lands down to a knee. Seven seconds to go. He looks busted up. Avidas back up. Look at that left eye, right eye. They're going to let it go. That's the bell. He beat him down to submission. Make sure he throw a jab. Just like Gonzalez did. Make sure you throw a jab. At the light button. Make sure you throw that jab. Bam, bam. All right. If you're watching on a mobile phone. All right. Do this. Jab to the X and then BAM. Land the cross. Just go ahead and land that cross to the like button. All right. Man, it's some man. I love it. I love boxing, man. Oh, look at this shit, bro. He beat him down to submission, dude. He beat him down to submission. Gets connected a little bit. What's up to scrapbook boxing in the house? Here we go. Right down. He goes straight at him. Pressures him. With that high guard is Gonzalez. But he moves it a little bit. And he moves that waist a little bit as well. Gutierrez has his hands lower. Gutierrez trying to fight him off. He's winning more thumping those punches. Jab by Gonzalez. He blocks the right hand of Avila. Gonzalez pressuring. He's trying to bust that pipe. Can the pipe with, with hand that's can he withstand it? I did send the link. I'll send it again for sure. I'm not sure what happened. You didn't get it? Down to Cowley, but nice right hand by Gonzalez uppercut. He's pressure. He doesn't stop. Right hand. Right hand again. And a right again. From the back foot. But he's throwing it like in a hook motion. And it's landing. Body shot. Right hand stairs. Left. Gutierrez fights him off. Momentarily. But he's relentless. Another right hand by Gonzalez. He doesn't stop. Hook. Hook. Right. By Gonzalez. Body shots by Gonzalez. Gutierrez. Not even, barely able to keep his hands up. He's tired. He's trying to fight him off, but man, he's trying to get away. Gonzalez. Damn, he just—they should stop the fight, man. I agree with you. I'm glad he got the link. I was about to send it again. I, I thought it was messing up again. Yeah, and yeah, after this, whatever, just he just now got. Oh, whatever. right hand again and a left, bro, and a right. They gotta stop it. Step in, ref. I mean, oh, really man. should, man. This is this is this is what we talk about with guys taking too much abuse, man. Uppercut. Look at this. It, it, so you could, I mean, stop the fight, look man. Look at his face, bro. Look at that right eye. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't. I mean, did we said did we talk about why uh, boxers be getting you know never oh, be the man, same, man? This is ridiculous. Stop the fight, look, look, right? it, look, look. I don't care. If you He's landing a hundred percent of his shots at this. Finally, with a with a left and a right. Even Gonzalez turned around like God. They finally stopped this shit. See how he turned around? Yeah, they said the, they, they said the the, the referee. I mean, the corner threw the towel in. Oh, it's a corner. God damn. Yeah, it's like, why does it take the corner, man? The referee's sitting there standing looking at it. What does the ref need to see? What confirmation does he need? You know? Man, you, I mean, you're getting hit 400 million times, man. 
and, and, and not missing any. Uh, and the other guy is barely throwing back. By the way, Cali, it's the guy that took a knee twice in the previous round. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So that that to me clearly you're still your side. Hey, look, man, the guy, the guy, I mean, a lot of guys, I mean, I get it, the guy's a warrior, but sometimes you gotta protect the fighter from a from a from himself, man. I mean, he come back another day, but this kind of beating it's a chance that he may never be the same again. I mean, right. you I mean these are the kind of beatings that guys take and they never recover. But this guy, in my opinion, might want to consider taking a year and a half off to recover. I'm serious, man. Or maybe should we should consider if he even wants to do this anymore. But I mean, when I see guys take a beating like this, I just it, to me, I don't, I don't think that guy should come back right away. I think you should take a long time off, a long time off, because you need time to heal. But I mean, this he, I mean, this fight should have been stopped a lot, a lot earlier than what he got stopped, in my opinion, man. It's just a, it's a disgrace sometimes. And I, I complain sometimes about early stoppages. I'd rather have you stop where well, fight stop way too early than way too late. I yeah. I consider this fight being stopped way too late, in my opinion. He took far too much abuse, man. Far too much damage. And these yeah. weren't like these were like pity patter shots. These were power shots, man. These were big shots. These were big shots, bro. Like he was <laughs> take look at that right hand he landed. Just brutal, man. Left hooks, overhand right. Straight right hands and, 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 and everything in Atlanta is just brutal, man. But but by the way, is is this proof that a guy could be out of it and like not quit? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> man, he may, this this instincts, is a good example. I think instincts kick in, and then you're um, you know, and naturally your 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 instinct is to try to defend yourself, protect yourself, and even to fight back. And you may not be you may not be clear minded in the ring. You could be foggy and still be fighting back just based off the of muscle memory, man. Uh, and yeah. that's one of the <laughs> downsides of this, man. I just I see this, and uh, I don't want this a referee to um, to referee another fight. In my opinion, I don't. I mean, come on, man. You got to stop this fight, man. You should have stopped this fight about thirty seconds earlier, man. I, I, yeah. I know people think uh, boxing thirty seconds is a lot. I mean, you can do a lot more damage in thirty seconds, man. Just, well, I'll uh, tell you what. If if I was a ref, he took the knee twice. Okay, yep. I would have told him, "Hey, you got to show me some. I'm gonna stop that fight." Like right, I would have let that fighter that expectation right off the bat before the round even begins. Yep. You know, so as soon as he uh, coming out taking that kind of abuse like that, you're like, "No, nah, I'm that. You're done, man. You're yeah. done." And it's not even like this isn't like a pay per view main event where people paid a lot of money. You know, it's nothing like that. Right. Like this this kid could fight on to live another day, and even if he's never going to be like a top echelon fighter, he this is still how he makes a living. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Even even journeymen um, do this for a living, and you can live a pretty decent lifestyle, or it can be a supplementary income to your to your regular life. Because some of these um, journeyman right. guys have regular nine to five jobs, but it's a supplementary cash. You know what I mean? So um, if, if some of these guys, if some of these journeymen, they may come in, and if you're making you know, ten thousand to come in and fight. That ten thousand helps when you're uh, maybe when you're ma only making forty thousand a year. That extra ten thousand, you need it. So, I mean, yeah. It's, just saying, man. It's, it's it, I, 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 I truly, I, I truly, uh, I hate it's, to see stuff like this. Man. Especially if it's like an extra ten thousand, like every four months. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like that, that's more than like, most people make in this country. Just that right. alone. It's you true. <laughs> like, it's true, man. <laughs> Yeah, yes. man, it's it's this is that ref needs to be reprimanded or just just. I agree with you. I don't think he should ref another fight ever again. Yeah, man, it's California, man. Yeah, they start coming down harder. I mean, I mean, just boxing in general, man. There has to be. Maybe we need to have some type of a meeting where referees should get some type of idea when to stop. I mean, I heard that the referees are, are taught to look to look in the eyes of a fighter too. To right. see if he's clear, you know, clear anything. There's things like there's things you can live. You can I, I don't even think he didn't even have him do the walk test or anything like that. Like right no. after the second knockdown. How about mm -hmm. give him a standard eight count too? And one of those yeah. scenarios where dudes are just loading up on shots. It's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with standing eight counts. We used to do that. See that normally. We don't see too many standing eight counts now. I think I would like no. to see the return to standing eight counts. Maybe we see some uh these fights start a little sooner. Some of these some of these fights, man. We used to seeing guys get asked. Annihilated, and the referee going, like, "Keep fighting on, keep continuing to fight on." I'm like, "What are you doing here, man?" Yeah, I mean, I saw something like this in another fight on Fox Sports, where the fighter died in the ring. Now he's since been um, saved, 
and had successful surgery. I forgot the fighter's name, but um, but yeah, but um, it, it's a shame that uh that the fight even got there. The guy's getting destroyed to the brain. A lot of shots to the brain is, is not good, man. Especially when uh, with gloves, you getting yeah. hit four, or five, six, seven times in a row. And I mean, it's better to get hit with one shot by Deontay Wilder than it is to get pummeled over and over and over and over again by the likes of, uh, you know, in a past legend, like someone like who's Leo Cesar Chavez Sr., who's just hitting you and landing every big shot to your brain. It's better. It's just better, man, that way to get yeah. knocked out with one shot. It is. Especially when it's like like you already know the dude's outclassed. You know what I mean? Yep. Like it's, he's not going to win the fight. He had no chance to win this fight, man. Like, no, not after him. round two, you could just tell it was a different level, you know. Yeah, it's, it's sad. And, I, and it's funny thing, you know, sad though. This fan to the crowd who would boo that, a boy stoppage. I'm like, really? And I, I, I mean, I, I've seen, I've gone to fights where I've seen fans getting mad. They're mad. I'm like, this guy was getting annihilated. You wanted him to die in the ring? That was. I don't. I don't yeah, I, I wanted know, to. Man. I wanted to ask you, man. Well, we have a break between the fights here. Um, what did you think of that? Uh, I, I think Brian Cheney's got robbed, man. In plain sight. What do you think of that fight? I, I do too, man. I mean, I, I was here at seven eight. He said he thought that Brian Jennings just got. I disagree with seven eight. That's my guy, man. But uh, no, I disagree. You got to land punches, man. I'm sorry. I just I understand that Brian Jennings didn't throw a lot of punches. I don't right. care if he's not throwing a lot of punches. If I throw three, you throw forty. But you only land one. I won the round. That's how, that's how I look at Especially it, man. Especially because the thing is, though, I think, like, I, I don't, I don't even think he was that inactive as they were making it right. seem. Right. Know? There were jabs in there. Well, he was landing those, those jabs were snapping Joyce's head back. Yeah. <laughs> he some shots on the inside, you know. Like I, I think a lot of that went unnoticed. And yeah, it did. One of the things I noticed, man, when, whenever I, I just – when I do a play-by-play, -play, I don't listen to the commentary. And sometimes, man, it's like I watch a totally different fight than people that listen to the commentary. Yeah, I, know, I, I listen to the commentary. They're like, you got to believe – I forgot the guy who was calling. It was like the old British um, – the announcer or just somebody said the bride, the play-by-play -play guy, he, I, I could tell he wasn't a fighter. But the fighter that was um, calling with him, he would actually give Brian Jennings more credit than yeah. the, the the British um, announcer, and I'm like, but I'm like, bro, what are you looking at? And the, the fighter would even say, well, you know, most of those punches are blocked, but still, he's more active. I'm like, no, you do not get credit for throwing landing punches on the elbows and forearms. Last time I checked, that's not scoring. That's considered block block punches. If 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 Brian Jennings throws ten punches and lands six, Plus. and Joe Joyce throws thirty punches and lands three, Brian Jennings won around. Well, it's not just that. It's, I don't know. People don't know this, but <laughs> defense is actually part of the scoring criteria. Right. You know what I mean? Well, so, what is that? No, that, that actually is true. You can win a round by not um landing a punch, man. <laughs> not throwing a punch. Well, especially, uh, the other guy don't, especially the other guy don't hit you. We've seen it happen before. But, yeah, um, you would have to make sure he doesn't hit you at all. Like, you yep. know, but um, but as far as you know, like just in general. You know, I think it's you, you could argue he showed defense in that fight because he look, man, he wasn't like piercing through the guard and landing punches in there that much. Right. Like all that was all in glove, you know, and people yeah. need to understand that. And it's not like that's all he was doing, you know. It's not like like Pacquiao versus uh, what's his name, uh, a Cloudy, a Cloudy, oh, Josh right. That would be an old terrible man. Cloudy in a couple rounds hit back, but there were some rounds he didn't do anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just different. You know, like like in this case, Jennings was hitting him. He was landing a couple hooks, you know, like it, it's he landed more than, you know, uh, what's his face? You know, counter shots, man. He was landing uh, multiple counter shots. Like the only good replays they had were from Jennings. Like, <laughs> like he's the only one that had like the clean shots you could play on replay and shit. Yeah, all the snapshots, all everything was like head snapping shots and stuff like that. You can see all that stuff, man. It's just amazing now, how um now that was ignored. If someone wants to argue to me, no, Joe Joyce won. Okay, fine. Okay, but don't 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 come to me and tell me Janie's won one or two rounds. You know, <laughs> one that. one eighteen to one ten. Are you kidding me? I'm <laughs> like, man, come on, dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, like, you got to You're like you're trying at that point. Like you're, you're doing it on purpose, you know. Um, I I just kind of it, it's it's I don't know. I mean, it's not a big deal because not like Brian Jennings is like the best American fighter or anything like that. Um, so it, it's it's like I already know when jo- when Joyce steps up, you know, it, it, he's gonna get knocked out, bro. You know what I mean? Now, I don't know if Hangouts is fucking up again. You there, bro? No, I'm here. Hold on a second. I got to oh. take it. Uh, f- for a second. Oh, <laughs> here we go again with Hangouts. Um, I got you, man. All right. So, anyways, guys, right now we're going to have um, Ray Vargas and Tomoki Kimada. That fight will be coming on, I believe, after this fight that's coming up next. But uh, you guys make sure you check out my Brian Jennings, you know, uh, you know, uh, live play by play. And I call that fight. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, there was also the 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 main event, okay, that um, was uh, Du Bois versus uh, Gorman, and that fight, Du Bois, I should say, dominated. He just dominated Gorman. Gorman got his ass whooped in that fight. And they, they made me wait like 30 minutes or some bullshit like that, okay, to uh, get the fight started because they had this big dramatic entrance for uh, Gorman. It, it was fucking insane. I didn't like it. Shit was bullshit. Uh, Matthew Valentine, shout out to D Style and uh, uh, Cali. What's going on? Batman Tweet in the house. Scrapbook, of course. Christian NWO, nah. You got to actually land punches to win rounds. Ducking, dodging, moving isn't enough. I'm not saying it's enough, but it's one of the of the criterias, right? So sometimes if a fight is, let's say nothing happens in a round, for example, all right? Let's say none of the guys land anything, Christian, right? None of them land anything. So you can't give clean, effective punches to any of the guys, Right? Let's say none of them were very aggressive at all, so you can't give effective aggressiveness to any of them. Right? It looked kind of even because none of them landed anything, so can you really give ring generalship to any of them? Eh. Now, can you give it to the guy that was slipping and dodging and blocking you know, more punches than the other guy? Of course you can. It is possible. I'm not saying it's likely, but, but it's possible. Batman tweet says, name of the game is to hit and not be hit. Make sure you guys throw a jab at the like button as you come in. I think I got this phone charged enough. Yeah, we're good, man. I could finally just turn the shit around the way I wanted to look at it. Let me turn this camera on right now. Should be good, man. Next week. Next week, we got um, uh, it's Pacquiao versus Thurman. I should be doing a play-by-play for that. I'm not entirely sure, but I should be doing one for that. And I'm definitely going to do one for a hooker uh, versus um, Ramirez. I'm looking forward to that fight to close out the month. That's, a, that's two weekends from now. Clifton, good to see you back. What's going on? I know what happened to the last feed, so people are slowly coming back. Make sure you guys share the video. All right, that way we can uh, be ready for these play-by-plays right now. All right, man, I'm, dumping, I'm double dipping with the fights. I'm watching the top rank card too. Uh, Josu, um, so okay. host, no host way, excuse me, host way Vargas. He's fighting right now. Um, Robert Garcia. I didn't know Robert Garcia was training, training the host way. Yeah, he was training out of the gym. That's right. With um Robert Garcia, Robert. Okay, you yeah. ever been to that gym? I know you're from. Nah, man, I haven't. That's the only. That's one place I wanted to stop by, but I haven't. It's um, his gym is located. Um, uh, oh, his gym would probably. His gym is about seven and a half hour drive from me where I'm at. Oh shit! So, yeah, so where I'm at, I'm in. Uh, I'm in Oakland, California, man. Oh, okay. and uh, and basically that that's right down there. That's um, what's the name of the city again? Uh, Moreno Valley. 
is where it's okay. located at. He's no longer in Oxnard, so. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, nah, close, remember, like in the Riverside area. Was it trying to hide from Alley Setback or some shit? <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing. It's like um, about hour 45, two, and if, hour 45 to two and a half hours, depending on where you're coming from in LA to get over there to, to his gym. So, yeah, he's uh, further out now, man. It's not the same way where it once was. By me, from, for me to get down to where some of those fights, when you get to like Temecula and fights down the riverside, the fights are much further away. But to get out to like Carson, Carson's about five, about a five hour drive, and we're five and a half hour drive, excuse me. And then to get to LA is about five hours. So about five hours to LA. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot different. It all depends on what, what I'm doing. Now, if, if, if I was to go from work, then it's, it's, then it's closer. It's close from work. Okay. Or father, your father stayed by my mom's house or something like that. Um, before I go down there, then that would work too because she lives uh, about 40, you know, 35, 40 minutes closer. So if I stop by there, oh, and then, 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 then it helps. So I can stop by to stay by the night before and then drive from there. That all depends on what I want to do. So, yeah. And it's, but it's, it's, it's a straight shot from I, I, I 5 to get to LA. You take the I 5. North, you can go for 580, 580 turns in the, um, to, uh, to International, uh, to International Interstate 5 South to right. Southern California. Man, you got to go through Central California to Fresno area. But if, if LA, I mean, if California's big. It's not as big as Texas, but it's still massive, man. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah. To drive from, from border to border, man, that it ain't no joke, man. That's a long ass drive. Long ass drive, man. Really long. It's yeah, I mean, like I'm, I, I'm from Texas, so. People assume I'm close to like Austin and Dallas. Hell no. But but no, I'm like nine hours away. <laughs> you know <what> I, mean? <laughs> like, I am in El Paso. I might as well be in New Mexico. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh man, I, I feel the same way. But like the, it's the same way for me. Uh, people are like, oh man, what about to get to LA? I mean, what about to get to San Diego? Like San Diego, like eight 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 and a half hours from here, man. That's hella far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah man, we ain't even close to San Diego. The best if you fly, it's cool, but I mean to, to, to drive, it's a, it's a long ass way, man. I mean, same thing. You go up like going up towards Eureka, towards Oregon. It's a long ass drive to go up that way. So, I mean, it's closer. It's not as long to get down there. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's about the same thing. No, it's about the same. It's a long ass drive, man. Uh, to get up there, man. Take the I five. Funny thing, they let you know a little and miss number, a little number, man. While we in between fights, um. In order, if you can go, Interstate 5 will take you from Mexico to Vancouver, British Columbia. Oh, wow. So okay. you never, yeah, you never have to get off that road. So if anybody, if you guys ever decide to take that ride, yeah, you can take that. It's a nice, beautiful, scenic ride, ride, but it's a long ass trip, man. And you'll see it, it mean, the whole state of California changes. But people have this misnomer about California being like all beaches and bridges and water and shit. Nah, bro. Man, yeah. most of California rural and look like the Midwest. For real, looks like most like farm the farmland. Most of California's farmland and rural. Okay. It's nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it will, it looks no, no different than a lot of other places. So, but yeah, outside of that, but I don't know. You don't you don't have the ESPN Plus app, or are you only just watching one fight, just the zone. I'm just watching the zone right now. It's too. Yeah. Uh, it, it's 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 a pain in the ass to do play by plays for two. <laughs> do that. But uh, I already did. I, I mean, I already did the ESPN Plus earlier today. That's the one right. I chose and got right. this one. The De La Hoya fight is next. Uh, his, his, uh, his, his, what is it? Is I guess it's his distant cousin or something like that, or second cousin. Oh, wow. Is he from Mexico or is he from uh, LA too? I'm not sure, actually. It's a good question. <laughs> He's going to be fighting Ronnie Rios. I know his dad is from his dad is from Mexico, so Mexico, that, yeah, yeah. That's why I was asking. What do you think of? Um, Let me see. Let me look what do you think of this uh, terrible showing at Carson, California? I mean, th th this. I guess it's slowly packing, but man, like it's there's a lot of empty seats. Yeah, no, a lot of starting starting to get up in there. It's, I'm it's starting to get up and out, but then I want I want them to look further up. I don't know why. Outside, what what's it still look like? I mean. It's just, it's just with the it, it takes does. a while, man. No, I'm gonna tell you this right now, man. When Tank Davis fought, yep. there was a lot of empty seats. As they got close to his fight, by the time he fought, as much as people, they were the cold crowd booed Tank Davis, right? 
It was a majority uh, Mexican crowd. They booed Tank Davis. It was fighting another uh, another Mexican, right? But yeah. they bought the tickets. It was sold out to see Tank Davis fight. Sold out. They came. Like I said, so I tell you, I said, about it, I said that, that says a lot about Tank Davis because there was no Mares there to help him, to help him pack yeah. the house. I said that's that's that says a lot about the kind of fighter that look, Tank's an exciting fighter. I would just like to see him fight a little bit better competition than what he's fighting. Oh man, Jose Vargas about to get this dude up out of here, man. Oh, dude had just grabbed, grabbed just held on. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, right now, this uh, we'll see if he has some re resemblance of Deloy. I don't know. Like something these family members though don't don't pan out, bro. You know. <laughs> Yeah, Diego Delahoy. Let me go look, man. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Just don't, be, just don't, be odd, don't be an oddball like uh, your cousin, man. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stay away from that one, though, man. Let's stay away from that one. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Saturday Sports TV, you say, what fight are y'all watching? What channel? I'm watching the uh, the Zone because I'm going to watch the Ray Vargas uh, Kimada fight. And Cali's double dipping. Hey, tell him I said, I'm watching the one on ESPN. I'm watching both. Carson, yeah. Oh my God! It, it is starting to fill up, though, man. Uh, towards the bottom, and no, like they should, some of they the should do what the WWE does. It tells everyone to go to one side, <laughs> and that's the only angle they show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, though, man, it's it's looking like people are starting to come in there. Yeah. But you know what? They they don't do that there, though. I can tell you now for the ushers, they make sure people stay in their seats no matter what. I, I mean, it would be better. It, that's right. stupid because it would look better for TV if you told people to come down and fill up right. the bottom sections at least. To make it look full, and you just pan the camera to make it look like it's full. True. <laughs> I understand? Right, oh my god, man! I'm looking like that. I know how the capacity. I'm looking at that. There's probably three thousand people there, man. Maybe yeah. two. I may. I may be. You know, you know what it is, man? The zone just gives them the money, and Golden Boy just got lazy. They, they didn't do any promoting. For they the didn't fight. promote this fight at all. I heard yeah. nothing from it. I'm in California, I mean, man. Kamala sold this fight more than anything because he did that whole "prove to me you're a Mexican" all that shit. Right. That, that promoted the fight more than anything. Man, I mean, it's not hard to put up billboards in in the LA area. It can't cost that much just to put up some billboards on on on, on, just, on, on the four or five and on five. Just, Why wouldn't you do that? Just put a billboard of a Japanese dude saying he's more Mexican than the Mexican. Like they'll, they'll show up. Oh, like, you know. They'll show up the roof of the Mexican, man. <laughs> but not, but if he but if he goes and starts knocking people out, then they will root. Mexicans will root for a non-Mexican fighter if, if he's you know coming yeah. forward and let his hands go. Especially a lot of casual fans, man. At the, um and um over in Carson, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Just keep it one hundred, yeah. man. They didn't, David Benavides was um was at one of the fights, man. And like, who was that guy? I was speaking to him. And they're like, yeah. who was that guy? And I'm like, wow, okay. Um, this is the uh, well at the time. Well, I said this is the. I just called him the WC Super Middleweight Champion in the world because he's about to get the belt back, in my opinion. But maybe I'll be proven wrong. But I don't think so. I think he's the best super middleweight. But we, we will find out one day. But um, yeah. but that's why I just told me the WC Super Middleweight Champion in the world. And they were like, oh really? Yeah. And they said, I said, oh, and he's Mexican. If, if you want to know. <laughs> but, uh, I'm not gonna tell you, Diego. Diego, gonna talk to him. But well, Diego De La Hoya is twenty-one and zero with ten knockouts, and he's from Mexicali, Baja California, so Mexico. So, um, so but, he's um, but it makes sense. Like I said, he got family there. He definitely didn't inherit the the the, the left hook. That's for sure. No, he does not. <laughs> wow. And he's 24. I don't think he's going to be getting this man strength. So. Rod Neal says, what's up to D-Style? What's going on, guys? I got Cali here with me. <laughs> We're about to start this fight. And so what he's got, man, uh, I don't know. I never seen I, I never seen this De La Hoya dude fight. Yeah, if Asa De La Hoya wasn't so you know, evil to, I mean, bad to black media, I would have I went to this fight. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? And, and not just that, I mean, when it's, it come out about the racism, I'm like, dude, I mean, it's stuff like this, like Fred, Fred is out of here. I'm, me, me right. town Fred, we're out here. We go to this fight. We cover it because it's local. I know, I know yeah. it's technically it's, um, it's, it's five and a half, it's a flat five hour drive, but we go to, we go, me and town go down to LA all the time. It's nothing for us. It's a straight shot. Right. I, I just, I just don't understand, bro. Why would you want to have more media there for whatever? <laughs> That's a whole other subject, man. He's dumb. Yeah. It's that like you don't want us to help you 
promote and cover your events? Really? How stupid are you? Whatever, man. That's a whole nother. Like I said, I'm not going to ruin your show with that, man. But, ooh, Joseph. Ooh, so, so. Jose. Ooh, Jose Vargas. Ooh, them uppercuts, man. He, she just stopped the fight. Stop the fight. Thank you. Thank you. My Stop God. The fight. Right on time. So right now we're in the center of the <laughs> ring. Not a lot going on. They're, they're just posturing right now, these guys. Yeah. Uh, Diego DeLoya's body looks soft as shit. I'll tell yes. you that right now. That's the first thing yeah, I know. He noticed. definitely doesn't look like he works on the midsection. <laughs> Rios, Rios looks much uh, you know, stiffer to the uh, midsection than he does, man. Looks like he yeah. actually worked on his core. Right. If I'm Rios, I might consider coming forward and let my hands go to the body. I, I, I think Diego saw Ruiz win. He's like, I don't got to get in shape. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> but right now, could, uh, nothing much happening, guys. Uh, I know I know you probably want some play by play, but nothing's happening right now. They're just posturing, honestly. That's what look, 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 nothing. Nothing. Finally a jab thrown, but missed by what's his name? Rios. This has to be the slowest paced fight I've seen all night. That's including the heavyweights. Oh, this goes to kill that whole Mexican style bullshit, right? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> missed right hand. Uh, uh, Diego has, I mean, there's, he's got no full work, bro. What's going on? <laughs> is he trying to set something up? What is he trying to do here? A minute to go in this first round, not a lot going on. Mm. Jab upstairs by mm. Rios, but that's all that's happened. Diego throws a hook, nothing lands. Mm. Right, over and right by Rios. Uh, I mean, by Deloya, but it didn't land really. Grazed. <clears throat> and nothing's really landing here. These guys aren't doing much here. 30 seconds to go in this round. And I'm waiting fell, for. More, more fell out. Man, I think more fell out round. I feel each other out here. Uh, a lot of feints by. It's weird how the uh, Deloya feints. He kind of steps forward three times every time. Yeah, if I'm reals, man, I'm looking at the midsection. When I go to work down there, man, now nah, we'll start now. Yeah, throw some jabs to the midsection. I mean, if anything, look at the right hand of Deloya. He's kind of covering that midsection. I yeah. think he knows he's vulnerable yep. right there. <clears throat> and that's, I mean, maybe, maybe reals is in the body puncher, man, but he, he should really consider. It's not like that um, Delahue is known to have a lot of power. I would probably, maybe he has a weak chin or something. I don't know. But, right, but I would try to sell out and get to the body. This is me. <laughs> I'm uh, considerate. At uh, least you, you don't have to sell out. You don't necessarily have to sell out again. I mean, you can work your way to the to the inside and get to the body. I mean, you can use that jab. You could jab to the uh, to the uh, to the body, but you can also jab your way and get get to the inside and start throwing combinations down there. Yeah, he's got to uh, close that gap from the mid uh, mid range to the inside, uh, but. We'll see. I think we're going to see what's really up in this round right here. I think both guys came in kind of cold, uh, yeah. and um, well, we're going to see. And and I think at some point, Rios can land a body shot, and we're going to see if Deloya is, can take it. But I, um, if he has any kind of power, as a matter of fact, let me see. Let me see who, who he's fighting. He said he's fighting Ronnie Rios, who's 30. Oh, he don't have no power either, man. This dude has a – 42% knockout rate. So there's no power in this. This fight's more than likely, likely to go to distance. But if I'm still reels, I will still try to do work the body, man. Why not? They exchange jabs here. And uh, he's trying to step forward with a jab, Deloya. Uh, but um, he's trying to get that right, but he got clipped with a jab, wasn't able to reach it there. Reels with the right hand ends upstairs. They exchanged the loyal did land the uh, uh, oh, that, way, that, that little hook to the body was beautiful of his. That double yeah. hook, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, he landed that very well. They're starting to exchange. There's more action already in this round than uh, all last round. Now, can I say something? If there's one thing that's typical of Mexicans, it's the it's the hook to the body and hook upstairs, man. That double hook, boom, boom. Yeah. That's it. That's actually what Reels just landed. Yeah. Yeah, they exchanged hooks right there. Uppercut inside by Deloya. Uppercut inside by Rios. Deloya with Rios the right hand. To, Rios is looking to land, land the right hand over and over. And I, I think he should go to go to the body that was there. Yeah, he's going with but, that body. He hit it twice with a hook there. Deloya ooh, missed it. Ooh. 
Nice body good. work. Are you seeing those elbows drop? Did you see those elbows drop? Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Rio sliding oh. to the body himself. De Deloya now. N nice oh. guard by Rios. Ooh, those body shots. And Rios and Star has learned. Yep. He started picking up to the body. It's looks beautiful now. Oui. Rio should continue to go back, go to the body, though, man. Rios has a habit of looking away when he throws a left hand. Yes. I'm noticing that. Well, where's he looking? <laughs> right hand <laughs> by the lawyer. They pat, and he turns away. Like, what's what are you looking at? Nice two punch combination upstairs by De La Hoya. Look at it. his face getting a little red, though. Ooh, ooh, this is this is not some good combinations being landed by both guys. Yeah. Atlanta big shots, uh, right on the inside. Ooh, they nice right. They, they separate from mid range. They go to the inside and they, they exchange some shots there. Nice, uh, very nice lead. Uh, right hand by yeah, by De La Hoya. De La Hoya, yeah, he caught him. Although Rio's coming back with that jab, he does good when he starts with that jab. Right hand by Deloya. Ooh, what a beautiful left yeah. hook by Rios. God, dog, man, this is a good fight. No. Yeah. Who's winning this round? Tough round, but Deloya comes in with a combination. Ooh. Tough round. The score is not over yet, yeah. and it's over now. Yeah, man, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how you score this round, man. I thought I, I almost, I almost want to score it even, man. I, I know that's, it's something, that's something that people yeah. aren't supposed to do, but – me, I thought those guys pretty much did equal work. They were both very effective going to the body and going upstairs. They both landed big shot, clean clean shots. I think <laughs> I'm going to give it to Rios, but it's definitely a close round. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely a close round for sure. Look at those uppercuts by uh, Rios. Real nice. Beautiful, man. I, liked the, I really like the body work of Rios more than anything. I know that they don't. It's not as aesthetically as pleasing on us. Oh, that hook is standpoint. beautiful. Uh, but the body work. Reels is beating up to the punch. Most of the lawyer's work is, uh, is kind of a retaliation. Uh, he has to be first, I think. Yeah, more more anger. More anger. You can see it. He gets. He seems to get frustrated when he did hit yeah. on his face. I can see it in his face. His facial expression, the telling. I still think that body's soft, man. Well, we'll see. Sometimes it's not. The look doesn't mean anything, but they're both exchanging jabs here. They're mid range, both guys. Is it mirror that oil looks busted up in the face? No, he was bleeding already. He was bleeding. Right. He got, he's bleeding that round, yeah. That was a one two. Oh, nice right hand by Deloya, but he buckled. He buckled. <laughs> hook by Rios, hook inside. Both guys posturing at mid range here. Missed shots by De La Hoya. He comes in. Those block. Those those are blocked by Rios. Rios, uh, what's wrong with Rios, man? He's oh, kind man. of just jab by De La Hoya. Is Rios hurt or something? I don't know, man. It's like his activity slowed yeah, down. Yeah, well, one two by De La Hoya landed. All of a sudden, Rios ain't pressuring. Oh, he's taking he's taking a round off already. He got round hurt. three. <laughs> already round off. Yep. Man, he landed some good oh, body work oh, right now, there. Now Rio's coming back though with yeah, more yeah. body work. Oh, beautiful. That, that was a nice uppercut to the body. Yeah. Looks to the body, and the lawyer comes back. He's always coming back, answering back for what's being thrown. But uh, I think yeah. he should be first a little more. Yeah, De La Hoya, man, he. Oh, my, what am I probably dealing with? He does have a fighting mentality where he wants to fight back. He's going to get in there with a bigger punch, man. He can be in trouble. Yeah, Rios opinion. with some body shots right there. Upstairs by Rios. Deloya missed those hooks. Rios hits him with a hook, and Deloya with an uppercut in the inside. Left by Deloya with a left hook. He throws a right uppercut in a straight. Yeah, Deloya's nose is butt just bleeding, man. He's leaking out the nose, man. Yeah, he's a bleeder, you can tell. Right <laughs> hand upstairs. 
Like, you don't want to be a bleeder when you're in boxing. Nah. <laughs> nah, man, especially any close rounds a lot of times, the referee's seeing, not the ref, but the judges are seeing all that blood. and just the, They may assume that the other guy's getting the best of you. <laughs> Your opponent's getting the best of you. Definitely. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I think they're always winning this round. Yeah, I think so, too. But Reels did some damage, though. He could he still did. steal. It's still 60. He could still steal the round. I don't know. It seemed like Reels took this round off. I don't know if he's trying to s save himself or right. what. I don't understand. Well, he was very effective last round. Maybe he got hurt with some shit with a punch. I don't right. know. But, what, I mean, it makes no sense. Ooh, they both changed left hooks. Okay. That was a good round. They did yeah. enough to close it to where he can um, win that. I'm gonna I gotta go to rest real quick, bro. But uh, quick break. <laughs> right, I, I agree. Back. I agree. Oh, he's leaking in the ear or something. Is that the blood on his ear too? Yeah, yeah man. Reels, reels is leaving stuff a little bit too open, man. Yeah, and I would like to see him, move, you know, move his head. That's something that he's not doing. You know, but I thought he won the round. I thought he threw more. He landed more punches because he threw more punches. For whatever reason, reels. Refuse to throw. Let his hands go to like the first, you know, 35, 40 seconds of the round. He just, I don't know what he was doing. But, but man, Reels, Reels, man, do you see Reels is doing a lot of good body work, man. But I thought, I thought Delahoy was definitely more effective in the round. That jab, though, by Reels, that did you show, they just showed on the replay was beautiful, man. It stopped him right in his tracks. Which Reels is throwing a nice little stiff piston jab, and I think he should continue to throw it. Especially when he's when he's when he's, when he's throwing that jab, especially that stiff jab, he stopped. He's absolutely stopped De La Hoya in his tracks. Now, what he should do after he throws that stiff jab and he stops him, he needs to follow it up with a right hand. That's what I would like to see uh, Reels do. Whenever he throws that piston jab, follow it up with a right hand because, as you, as you can see, whenever he's throwing it. He stopped De La Hoya in his tracks, and De La Hoya doesn't cover up. He's leaving himself wide open for a straight right hand. All right, bro, I'm back. Sorry about that. It's all good. And well said. Okay, look at this now. Um, high guard by De La Hoya, mm -hmm. and, and he's, you know, landing back, man. But Rio's punches, I think, are having more of an effect on De La Hoya. I think so, too, man. And, and look at his guards trying to lower. He is soft to the body. Man, those hooks by Rios. Uppercut by Rios. I don't know if Del Oye should get in these exchanges, man. <laughs> I, I think he's – I'm telling you, I, I was looking at – when they showed the replay of the jab, and I was remembering the jab, his jab has been very effective as well as the body work. Whenever he, that jab, that jab stopped De La Hoya right in his place, right in his tracks. Yeah. And he doesn't cover up. He leaves himself wide open. Yeah, I, Reels, think, I, think, I, I think Reels is winning this round, man. Yeah, he is. Uh, and and that, up, that uppercut is beautiful. Ooh. That lead uppercut. De La Hoya comes with a hook. One, De two by De La Hoya. Right. I don't, nice uppercut by De La Hoya there. Right. Right hand. By Ooh, those uppercuts, those uppercuts are absolutely gorgeous, man. He's throwing uppercuts and following up with, with a body shot. Yeah, beautiful. Look at that body shot by Rios. Another body shot by Rios. Man, you see, you see Rios, man. Not Rios, but you see De La Hoya's covering that body up, man. Yeah. Big time. He's definitely it's, it's having Ooh, an effect. uppercut by Rios. Wow. Rios landing both uppercuts. The, the yep. lead uppercut and the one off the back foot. Man, after that, that those those body shots, man, are just ki a killer, man. I tell you, man, if Reels had a little bit more power, man, he probably would have put De La Hoya on the ground. But I think he has the potential. To, if he continues to, to throw the body the body shots over the next four or five rounds, man, he may break De La Hoya down there with an opportunity. I know he don't have a lot of power, but that doesn't always mean anything. You have an opportunity to stop him in, in maybe in like the ninth or tenth round. They just went through like 20-plus seconds where they did nothing. <laughs> you know. Body shot thrown at range from the by uh, Deloya, although he's starting to low, look. He's, yeah. you know, I don't know, man. They're not doing much. Both guys. Right. Yeah, we, we, all that, all that work. But I think Reels. I don't know. If Reels is trying to conserve energy in some way after he does, puts does a lot of work. Yeah, I don't get it. Did he seems like he takes a round off or takes half a round off? Right. Man, I don't. I don't know, man. It just. 
I don't want to say this. Real start the fight. <laughs> I'm not trying to say uh, like, no. like I'm like, like come well, on, man. Remember I said it. What the hell's up with Reels? It's like the third round. Like, what the hell's going on? Doesn't make any sense for him to not press on. He doesn't look tired. Am I crazy? He don't look like he's sucking wind or anything. Why? I mean, yeah, it's kind of weird. That's for sure. Just odd to me, especially. It's not like he's he's not over there like, you know, we've seen like Joshua and like another fighter like really sucking wind. He's not sucking wind. He look fine. I agree. I don't know why he wouldn't let his hands go. I mean, I mean, I don't know if he's just going to do an onslaught, but look yeah. at that face of the lawyer. I mean, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, he's getting busted up, man. I mean, he had, they had to clean up blood off his ear in the last round. For those that ask me, uh, the I know people are asking, when is the main event? It's after this fight, guys. They're both in the ring here. Not a lot going on here. Right hand by Rios, and he gets him with a hook. A lot of those De Loya punches aren't landing, man. I know, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what to think of De La Hoya, man. As far as the uh, you know, bantam weights, man. Uh, I think he's a solid fighter. I don't know if he's a champion. I don't think I don't know if he's a champion. I don't know if he's championship material, man. He doesn't have his cousin's left hook, that's for sure. No. Or jam. The lack of power, man. Yeah. It's just and, and the lack of defense. I know De La Hoya would get hit with some shots, and now because he would be throwing multiple combinations, but he could block shots and he could slip shots. He wasn't a, a, tra a tragedy on defense. That's something yeah. he wasn't. Uh, De La Hoya is uh, struggling to get in here. He's having a very hard time. He got a right hand in there, but Rios is just posturing a lot, man. He's waiting. I don't wait know, man. He could go back to the body attack, man. We're just killing Re I mean, killing De La Hoya, man. I don't know what he's doing, man. He's throwing jabs upstairs. There he went to the body, finally with a right hand. Double jab by De La Hoya upstairs. And he, whenever Reels decides to throw body shots, man, it's a, he's a very effective. But right. then he just decides to, like, I'm not going to throw punches for 30, 20 seconds. Why? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, I mean, I haven't seen other fights of his, but. Me neither. You know. But he, does, he doesn't. It was, I mean, it's, he doesn't look tired. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. I, I know what tired and fatigue looks like. He doesn't look like that at all. So what am I missing? Yeah. Maybe he's trying to set him up or something. Right there, Del Hoya going upstairs. Maybe set right hand by Rios. He goes to the body uppercut upstairs. And nothing else happens after that. <laughs> What's going on? I, I don't know, man. It's... It looks like I'm, I, I'm showing you I could do something, but I'm trying to give a signal out. I don't know. but Yeah. Like I said, I don't want to throw conspiracies out there, man. It, it is possible. <laughs> Um, He's throwing a fight. <laughs> if, if if someone can look up Rio's, is this his first 12, 12 round fight? I don't know if that's on his head, on his mind. I, I can see. I still got him pulled up. Let me look. Oh, he landed a good hook on, on Deloya. Another no, hook. No, he went. He fought Another Ray hook. Vargas. He lost to Ray Vargas and went 12 rounds. He landed three straight field. hooks, bro, and a right hand on, on Deloya. Another right hand on Deloya. He's only going 12 once, though. He went to the body, man. Deloya with a nice hook, but Rios comes back with another hook. He landed some vicious hooks on Deloya. Yeah. That was some vicious shit, I got to say. You know. Ooh! De La Hoya, man. Getting, getting, hit with, getting hit with big left hooks, man. Yeah. That is crazy. To me, the, the bigger shots, the more impressive shots are being landed by Rios, man. Yeah, I agree, man. Oh, those left hooks. He's just eating them, though, man. Like I said, I, to me, I, I understand that. To me, just based off the, the kind of shot, the clean, effective shot, I'm giving it to Reels. I understand the Reels did do a lot that that's round. A, that's a Reels round by far, in my opinion. Yeah. But the, the, the big, the monster shots all landed by him. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm his trainer. I'm like, hey, how about you some defense, man? Man, they're showing the replays, man. Holy shit. Yeah, he's, like, he's getting hit with monster left looks, man. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. I was like, put your gun. Will you please leave your right hand up? He leaves his he leaves his hands around his waist, man. I don't understand that shit, man. Like it, it, it's hard to understand. You know, it's it's, it's... 
I mean, has he had, had left his right hand up any time during this fight? Left his right hand up around it. I mean, right right next to his face. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, he's been down. another hook, bro. He landed, real landed a big hook on him. And you're right. He's got to answer the phone with his right hand. The lawyer does. <laughs> so, like, will you please uh, do a better job defending? He's a millennial. You got to tell him to answer the phone. You know? <laughs> oh, 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 okay. They, this? Okay. <laughs> it's a new Karate Kid method and shit, you know? <laughs> Let me block my face. Right. <laughs> he just... Left hooks all day, man. I'm un unbelievable, man. I don't think the lawyer's gonna make it to to the distance, man. The lawyer goes down to a knee, bro. He nah. Took a knee. Look at this. You can see it happening, bro. You can see it. You can Five, see him getting broken down. Six, seven. He's up, but he nope. doesn't look that good, bro. He doesn't look that good. Nope. The ref yeah, he, stops he, it. He quit. I saw it. A, uh, you seen it coming, though, man. We were all just talking about it. I thought it would be a you little wanna, later. Do you want to continue? Like, you said you, you, said you and I. But no, so you, when you and I, we were just talking about it, about him, right? We were just talking about I said how he's getting broken down in the body. First thing you pointed out was uh, soft to the midsection. But yeah. we, were, I, we were both watching him take a lot of abuse in this fight. Right. And I knew, I said, man, at some point, I said, this dude is going to catch up to him. Yeah, man. <laughs> Diego De La Hoya. Um, and look, look. I get it, man. And a lot of, if not all, the, um, uh, you know. Uh, it's up, it's considered an upset, but if you just go based off experience, I mean. Yeah. I, yeah. Mean, 30, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, but but 33 fights is I 33 mean, fights. Then, then, let's, 17, dude. let's be honest, bro. If his last name wasn't De La Hoya and he wasn't the yeah. second cousin, he yeah. wouldn't be here. No. All right. Like that's, that's what it is. It's like, uh, remember, Tom, what was his name? Uh, Thomas Schrenn's son? Tommy's hurting so I forgot Tommy Turner. I know you're talking about, yeah. And he got all these states on ESPN Fight Night Fights. He wouldn't have been on there if it was well, Thomas Turner. Well, you can say the same thing about Shane Mosley, son. <laughs> you wouldn't have been on the contender? No. No. I mean, the best example. Chavez Jr. wouldn't be anywhere near. Okay, where no. he got if it was if he wasn't the son of Chavez, bro. Chavez Jr. is a disgrace to bro. his daddy. Bro. Chavez Jr. was the godson of Suleiman. Okay, that tells you everything. Like I said, he's a disgrace to his daddy's name. A guy who has natural talent, who never tried to train hard, right? Who never gave massive effort when it came to fighting. He was just a spoiled rich kid who just uh, wanted everything given to him, wanted everything handed to him. Um, always leaves training camp. He's in the yeah. middle of training for a fight. Always leaves and goes off and does whatever fuck he wants to do. And then he'll he'll show up. He'll be gone for days. He'll be gone for days. Sometimes he'll miss a whole week, and then he'll show back up. And like, let's continue. Like, wait a minute, you got a fight coming up. And, and no, but do you remember the twenty four seven where like he had to be, he had to train, right? And Freddie right. Roach is outside the gym. He's waiting for him to show up, and <laughs> he decided to just move furniture and just just to hit the mitts in his living room with his buddy. You know, <laughs> And then the, the worst part was when um, his dad, right? His dad stayed up almost all night watching film of Sergio Martinez. Right. And he's trying. His son wakes up at three o'clock in the afternoon. It's insane. <laughs> his dad's like, "Come here, you know. Uh, look at this. Look. Like when he does this, he makes his mistake, and he cut him off. He cut off his dad. He cut him off, and he said, "I already know. I know. I know." But you know, do you know what this is? This is uh, that's a definition of a kid whose father had to work for everything. Yeah. And and his son didn't. His son, yeah. like, I'm already have all this stuff, man. He he just assumed because he won some fights based off of natural talent. He won some fights based off his natural talent. And he had a great chin. He had he definitely had his dad's chin. So he took he took he's taking a lot of abuse. So I mean, because he had his dad's chin, he would just show up and like I can just and he would be a lot bigger than some of his opponents, too. He'd just fucking blow up to this massive giant <laughs> in the ring. And he just walked through everything and just stopped the guy. And then finally, when he started to step up in class, it started to catch up to him. All that not training. And then on top of that, missing weight. I mean, the guy the guy never dedicated himself to the sport. And he's still in the sport. It's like, well, somebody for stop giving this guy a license to fight. I don't want to see him fight anymore. I want him to go away. That's what I want him to do. Yeah. It means a waste of time, man. I mean, like, he's... 
he, it's shameful that this guy um, got all this accolades. I, I was I, I was excited about it. Everybody was excited for Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Yeah, Especially yeah. he showed you some stuff. Then when you find out who he when you find out who he really was, which is a lazy bastard, <laughs> then he started to stop caring. It's like, oh, this guy doesn't give a shit. So okay, I don't care about him then either. He he just shows up for a check. It's like and that's basically what he does now. And when he, just like the Canelo fight, he showed up for the Canelo, he showed up to Canelo fight for a check. Didn't do anything. Just got beat up for twelve rounds. And what what belt did Ronnie Reels win? He just put a belt on him. What's, what's, he's a champion. Maybe an, 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 is it NABF? No. Oh, that's, okay, okay. That's the, that's the WBA gold. Maybe WBA gold. What does WBA gold mean? I don't know, man. It's a new belt they just came out with recently. I thought I gold think, yeah, was yeah, the belt. WA gold. No, the the, regular, the super belters. They got the WA super. WA. They got the WA super. The WA interim. The WBA regular and not a WBA gold. <laughs> God damn. Holy shit. Well, what? the WC is still worse. WC has the, the main WBC, now the franchise belt, the silver, the diamond, the interim, and um, they got one more that I forgot about that they have that they're supposed to be coming up with some other. <clears throat> they're coming up with another belt for whatever fucking reason. Um, the WBC, I'm like, stop. Stop with all the belts. We only need one. Yeah. The IBF has gotten it right. The IBF is the only sanctioned body that has it right. There's one IBF belt. There's no IBF interim, no IBF regular, no IBF diamond, gold, dookie belt. None of that. Just the, clause. <laughs> it's just the IBF. Yeah, they got a rehydr- rehydration clause, a 10 pound rehydration clause. You can't break it. They, right. they, the IBF is right now. People don't want to hear this. I keep reminding people. I said, the IBF is the best station in body right now. It's the most rational one. Yeah. I know it's located in America, but it's the most. Ra- they force you to fight. your mandatory. There is none of this. They don't you know, allow you to take them. Some t- they may give you one. Um, they may let, let you step. They may, they, they may let you bypass your, your uh, mandatory once. You have to fight him the very next fight. There is no, oh, I want to fight this other guy. Nope. We already gave you. We already let you uh, step aside already. You can't. You you're not going to get in the. There's no more leeway. You cannot bypass this. Now we're going to strip you if you don't fight them. And that's what they do. They they stand by their word. The IBF is the only one doing it. WC, the WO, WA are doing some other stuff. They play games. They have. Um, I know the IBF didn't have the greatest rankings because one of the reasons they don't have the greatest rankings is because of the ten pound um, rehydration claw. I mean, you know, rule that they have in their um in their in their uh, sanctioning body. But you can do that with discipline. If you're a disciplined fighter, you that's not a problem. Guys don't want to be different. <laughs> uh, look, man, the IBF is definitely – I mean, I'm not saying they're perfect, but they're definitely no. better than the other ones, you know. Um, and and not, I like their rehydration clause as well, um, you know, because I want fighters to win based off of skill primarily, you know what I mean? So oh, You don't like like Callum Smith like, where he blew up like Carlton uh, Dom where he was about basically 200 pounds? No, I, I don't like guys that rehydrate. He, said and, he uh, Carlos and Dom – they say, they said he came in at he they said in him losing weight in the fight, but he came into the ring like 165 and a half. And then you had freaking Cal Smith was 198. <laughs> All right. Now I just want to say really quick here, uh, we got no links here, guys. All right. Uh, we can't be sharing links. Um, I don't do it. Okay, so sorry about that. I don't want anybody sharing links, by the way, uh, to all the moderators. Um, as far as the uh, Walter Robinson put uh, talking about Chavez Jr. Then he got his check stolen by some Vegas hookers. He's a clown. Yep. <laughs> and he got filmed. Right? Did he get filmed? Yeah, he did. He said he said he's just um an idiot, man. I'm just I'm so annoyed by that dude, man. Because he he is his dad was such a great fighter and such a pro. And then we got this clown. <laughs> just a, just a, he's the polar opposite of his dad. It's everything wrong with boxing. His dad was everything right about boxing. That's how that's how bad this whole situation was is when it comes to junior and senior. Senior was the total pro. Right. The, you know, first ballot Hall of Famer, all time great. Then you got Junior who has a ton of talent, natural talent. He's like, I'm just gonna live with my natural talent. I'm not gonna work. I mean, you think you could actually go to and train hard and work hard? Are you kidding me? Come on, man. He's not like, gonna do that. <laughs> Another thing they said that Chavez Jr. couldn't stay away from weed, man. That was another thing with him. He's one of his issues. <laughs> well, look, the thing is, I know a lot of people that smoke weed and they're still hardworking and they still do what they got to do, you know? 
But I, I think he was like, uh, they're smoking weed and then, and then there's pothead. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think this dude is, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I never liked him, bro. I'll be honest with you. I never liked Charles. <laughs> he's, he's a big guy, and naturally, too. When you look at him, you can think he's about six, one and a half. And you can look at him a lot of times walking around. Like, I've seen him walking around. He led about 200 pounds. Like, how the fuck is this dude cutting down to 154? <laughs> so it, it, like, man, that's just like ridiculous, man. Look, it's not packed yet, but there's a good amount of people there now. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's gonna come in. They're, 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 they're like purposely holding these these dudes in the locker room. Like, hold on, we got we to let people come in. You know, <laughs> like they should have comped at least a thousand tickets or something. In my opinion, I, I know people it's give not. people give promoters a hard time when they comp tickets, but man, it's better to have more seats in the house, bro. It's know? LA. It's look, I'm not trying to be funny. This is Cardinals predominantly Mexican. It's LA. Yeah. How the hell can you not sell Mexicans to Mexicans? I'll tell you I'm, why, because they're because Golden Boy got lazy because they got their money from the zone. They're like, we don't give a shit what this shit sells. You know what I mean? That's what it is. And they don't. They are pulling a the lick. They're not putting in any effort. They're not promoting any of their fights. Yeah. Matter of fact, how many of the zone fights are actually the, the zone, bro? I don't like, hardly see any man, fights. Man, the, the zone needs to put pressure on these these promoters to like tell them, hey, I, I want to pack the arena, and if you got to give away the tickets and do it. You know what I mean? Like we want to pack the arena in the house. It looks good to the eye, yeah. man. It, it makes people want to tune in. You know, when you see in a fight and the crowd is no one's in the crowd, yeah. you know, that kind of makes you be like, oh, man, this fight must suck. You know what I mean? Some, some cabin fans may see that. They're like, well, no one went to the fight, so this fight must man, be two guys who suck. There was some good fights earlier, but there was no yeah. energy in the arena. There's No one's there, you know? Only their family members were there. <laughs> well, that's why when you, when you do this, you, you want to get fighters out here. You got to – introduce these fighters to the to the area you know what i mean and then one thing i, I give credit for pbc which is why yeah. they usually do well not i mean they had a couple of events sean porter event didn't do as well from a, from a seat standpoint but when other fights have been there the reason they do well when they bring mexicans in there they bring mexicans in the first thing the mexicans that people know <clears throat> you know what i'm saying they try to they tend to get mexicans from southern california and put them on the card you know what i'm saying right, which, right, is, yeah. which is a good idea when the internet, when it makes more sense, you know, so let's make sure we put some some guys from the L.A. area. Yeah, a lot of um, when um, when rock bands come here, you know, they, they 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 get local bands and stuff to open up the show. And it's just it's right. a smart thing to do. It, it makes sense. Right. You know, so you don't have to draw some other people who may some people may just come for the local band. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. it's, a, it's a good it's a good reason to draw people in. A lot of the local bands, they, they do that because they'll do it for free. You know what I mean? Right. They're like, right. uh, oh, open up a show for Metallica? Nah, you got to pay me. Fuck no, I'm going to do it for free, right? They're like, no. It, it was free publicity, too. Plus, it's a way to help you get yourself out there. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then on top of that, see, when, one thing, when 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 PBC, when they have Adam Konoski fight, you know, he's Polish. When he fights, <clears throat> when he's fighting on the undercard, they also market him on the undercard, bringing in Polish fans, which helps, you know, pack the arena. That's what you do. You try to bring in fans from that local area to help pack the arena. We got some guys. Maybe the co-main event may be, you know, may have a name or semi have a name, but maybe they're not used to selling um, a lot of tickets to, to the venue. But yeah. it's a good. I'm just saying, man. Look, they got two Mexican fighters. There are Mexican fans who are good. There are hardcore fans who go, who will go to the um, to the Carson card because the Carson fights are cheap, man. For the, that's one place. It's one venue where the fights are cheap. You could get tickets for as low as sixty bucks, man. At Carson, so that's that's a rarity, like, man. It did. Go ahead. <clears throat> Look at that Hooker Amidas poster. Is that yeah. where the fight's gonna be? No, um, no, it's gonna be in Dallas. Okay, it's just a zone yeah. promoting it. Okay, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, because it's gonna be on the zone. Because it's on. I was hoping, I was hoping that it, that top rank would have got it to put in Fresno. Cause I would have went. <laughs> that's what I wanted, man. I wanted, I wanted it. I wanted top rank to get it. Because I, I would have went, man. Because the Jose Ramirez, Jose Ramirez fought, um. When he fought Jose Cepeda, man, I'm gonna tell you that that top rank card was so dope. It was fun. It was a great card. I liked the card, I man. I, I thought the card was exciting, and it was a fun event, man. I, I tell you the one thing about top rank, man. I may have some issue with some of the things that they do, but their production is second to none, man. They're the private. I would say they're the best. Well, they've uh, been doing it for a while. It comes to it. Yeah, it's. I mean, and their events are amazing, man. Fun. Well, they also. Top rank events are I mean, really, even really Bob Arum admits he he kind of stole some of the stuff from. Or borrowed from UFC, you know, in terms of, right? You know, you know, 
Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised by that at all, man. It's but it's it's smart. Yeah. If you go there, it's like wow. I mean, the, the, they have. Look, man, I've I've seen um you know multiple I'll, PBC cards. I'll give I'm, you a see this. Well, I'll give you a see this, man. They packed the house from the beginning. You know, like for the most part. You know, it's by by like when the yeah, main for cards the most fights, part, yeah, yeah, for the most part, except for like the very very early cards. Right, right. When Jose Ramirez came out there, the crowd had already been packed for like four or five fights already. Yeah. So that tells you something right there. But they started fights. Um, for the Jose um, Cepeda card, I was there for the very first fight. The very first fight, I believe, started like one o'clock, and the, the card ended. I think the card ended like at seven thirty at night. So that would be nine thirty your, your time. So you think about it, that's six hours of fights, but it was it was it was fun, and and the crowd started to show up at around three thirty. Like the crowd, the crowd was um three three quarters of the way full by three thirty. So <laughs> that tell you something right there, man. People, it, it matters. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna, and I agree with that. You know, it it just comes down to promotion, bro. Like that, that's like doing the the groundwork. I guess is the term I'm looking for. You know, you know, like in politics, when you want people to go to go out and vote, they have people on the quote unquote ground, right? You know that that's the golden boy doesn't put the groundwork. They just assume, oh, just put a Mexican on the card and the Mexican will show up. But if the Mexicans don't know there's a Mexican on the card, how are they going to show up? <laughs> they're not. They're not going to show up. And the funny thing, I know, I know Mexicans, Mexican fans. I know most of the people in LA are Mexican, right? So I know a lot of Mexicans that, that go to the fights down there because you know they live in the area. And they, you know, they like to go to fights. They don't care fights. They like to go watch fights. And it's close and it's cheap. And and if I don't, just, you can see from the camera. It's not a bad seat in the house. The, the, if I don't know if you if you ever get a chance to come out there, man, I'm telling you, the 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 the, the, the indignified health park seats because it used to be uh, what was the name of the former name of the fucking place again? I forgot what it was called before. But um, but yeah, the, there's not a bad seat in the house, man. Every seat is beautiful. I mean, it's, it's, it's you're right on top of the of the of the ring, man. You're right on top of the ring. It's a it's, it's I mean it's it's if you tell people there's a fight, a lot of most people don't know. People, are, oh, there's a fight. I don't know. I didn't know. I, I've heard that so many times, man, <laughs> about people that would have gone because it, it's the tickets are affordable. All you got to do is just let people know. Go on the radio. You know, start promoting it on the radio um, two, three weeks ahead of time. Yeah. Do it on sports talk radio. You don't have to do it all on Spanish uh, on, on Spanish radio because yeah. uh, a lot of Mexicans listen to sports talk radio. They like they like the Lakers. They like the Dodgers. How about Aaron right. doing a Dodgers game? Yep. How about <laughs> have him throw the first pitch? Yeah. Have Vargas throw the first pitch over there, or that, or this wannabe Mexican dude throw the first pitch. You yeah. Know? Which brings me to this. Um, Kameda came out, bro. <laughs> He's like, he asked Vargas in his face, like, "Are you Mexican? Right? If you're Mexican, come out and fight like a Mexican." Um. Every time someone does that to a Mexican, they tend to lose, right? Yep. So, well, how do you see this fight going, man? Hey, man. I mean, Kameda, I, I see Kameda fight in the past. He, he fights like a – he does have a, like a, a little bit of the flash. What well, he used to. I heard that he changed because I haven't seen his fight since the since he used to fight on HBO, man. He, I don't know if you remember he used to fight on HBO. I haven't seen him fight in a while. I don't know why. I missed most of his fights. I haven't seen him fight in a while. But I heard that he changed to more of a come forward – Fighter let his hands go. That wasn't his style. He used to slip a lot of shots. Use a little bit of movement in the ring. Um, fight a little bit off the back foot, <clears throat> but it didn't come forward. But just was real flashy. You remember he used to put up to wear a lot of um, loud <clears throat> colors and stuff like that into the ring, man. Yeah. I don't know if from, from what I heard he's changed. So I'm I'm interested in seeing what he looks like now, man. He's he's supposed to be a different fighter from than when he used to fight. That's what I was told. So that that actually kind of intrigues me because that's not what I was expecting. <laughs> I was right. expecting something else. I heard him. I, I, I was. I, I just remembered uh, how he used to fight. I thought that I said it's a chance that he might uh, class this guy. I don't know. I mean, you know, I never seen the, the other guy fight before. Yeah. So, but I've seen Kamado fight three times <clears throat> in, in the past, but I haven't seen him fight in a while, man. So I'm, I'm interested to see what it looks like. That hurt he's changed. Is it true? Did he change the style a little bit from what we, what he used to be when he first initially first came over to America, at least? Well, we'll see how Kameda fights. This talks about he might fight a newy. Somebody put that in the chat. Uh, K came K two two said if Kameda could win today, he might fight with a newy in the future. That could be a big fight in Japan if he pulls this off. Yeah. And, 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 
Man, I'm stab. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, look I, this I'll say, man, the hype is over the top right now, right? But I mean, he's doing his thing. You know what I mean? If people just left it alone, like just, just you know. Oh yeah, New York. Like, bro. I, I, that's, I, don't, I don't see how he beats New York. I don't just me. I don't. I don't see it. Maybe I'm wrong, man. <laughs> Why don't? Well, he's definitely got power for that division. That, that's sure. But um, we'll see, man. I, I guess I have a better gauge of him when he fights Onito Donaire, win or lose. So if right. he loses to Donaire, man, that's a lot of these dudes are going to have a bad weekend again. Oh man, <laughs> man, yeah, <laughs> man, that that changes everything, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh wow, he just happened to run into something. And that's that that really changes everything, man. I'm like, well, okay, that wouldn't. No one was expecting that. No one. No one expects, especially um, no, Donaire being that he is past his prime. He is. Yep. So if he, if he does, I mean, I mean, I, I'd be happy for him because, you know, um, I don't know if you need a Donaire used to train out here, man, in San Leandro, man. It's a, it's, it could, it's, a, it's a small town. It's a suburb of Oakland. You can stand in Oakland and San Leandro at the same time. So, okay. yeah, so I, I, I mean, I, I like you know, Donaire, Donaire, man. He got a lot of fans out here, a lot of fans out here in, 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 in the Bay Area. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pulling for him. <clears throat> oh, you want for upset? You tired of the hype, yeah. huh? <laughs> I just well, well, yes and no. So, so it is it, that that is a primary reason. But I'm not gonna lie, I, I actually I want only to Donaire to have a big moment, you know? Right. Um. Yep. So you know, I, power, I like man. comeback stories. I like comeback he, stories. He has the power, man. If he catches him, he can time him coming in. Something like I think I think Donaire should definitely try to time him. I mean, but I would like to see how does um Aniwa fight off the back foot? They don't ever seem like anyone's put him on the back foot. And it's like everyone's on the on the retreat. So <laughs> see yeah. if he has any power going backwards. That'll be that'll be someone should try that on him. See if see if it works. He's gonna That's run not- into someone like that. I mean, he's in, he's in those weight classes, so he's gonna run into some Mexicans and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's gonna get backed up like at some point. You know. So I, I, that's just my opinion, but. People are getting out of hand already with this whole best fighter. I, I, I think I think when he fight near, he gonna, he gonna run into some problems. Just me, but what do I know? Yeah, <laughs> I think Louis Neri, I think Louis Neri gonna uh, be the one to beat him. That's the one I have beating him. Yeah. <laughs> People are like, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. You're a hater. Like, okay, it's not it's it's, it's not out of the question. Well, why, why are they even getting mad about it? I'm like, well, somebody, you guys act like Neri can't crack. Well, it's not just that. I mean, if 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 I don't get why people get mad when someone says somebody could beat somebody, you know, like right. it's like they're gonna fight anyway. You know opinion. what I mean? And then we'll find out. It's a, but it's an opinion. Yeah. People don't want people don't like other people's opinion. <clears throat> it's okay. It's one thing if they're hating when they're just gonna do. You know, we have people out there like right. man, something like that, and may hate on another fighter. That's completely different. But I, like I said, I cannot like a fighter and still admit that he could fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just I, I, I have plenty of fighters out there. I'm not gonna sit there and act like, oh my god, this dude can't fight at all. Look, man, I don't like Dillian White that much, and I don't think that he's a tremendous fighter, but I do think he's one of the better heavyweights. I mean, the heavyweight division isn't that deep, so it's not like he doesn't have any kind of skill. He always has a punter chance. If he lands that left hook, he got a chance not to get you up out of there. He ain't that bad. He ain't that bad. Yeah. Not he ain't so bad. Remember, remember uh, Rocky with uh, kids <laughs> yeah. so I said, You ain't so bad. Come on. You ain't so bad. I'm like, oh, he can rock you about to rock you. He's doing the Hulk Hogan. That's doing the Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you check out my uh, my my uh, Apollo Creed versus Clubber Lang play by play. No, I missed that one, man. I, I've been I've been um, I've been um, voting in your polls though. Gotcha. Okay. I've been voting on your polls, man. No, I missed that. One. I'm gonna check it out though, man. <clears throat> I've been voting on all your Jesus polls. Christ. I know you got the the Timothy Bradley week coming up. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, it's technically I'm, already Timothy Bradley week, but haven't gotten into those videos. But I usually talk about it during the week right. you know, for stuff like that. Timothy Bradley, great fighter, horrible commentator, man. That's all I can say. <laughs> I remember when he was like, well, what, what did he say again? He's like, I know people are going to say, oh, it's Thomas Schwartz. But let me tell you, he looked good. But like, well, what else are we supposed to say? Of course we're going to say that was Thomas Schwartz. You know? Like, <laughs> Like you remember that? I don't know. If you remember him saying that? You know? He, yeah, I do remember. Yeah, let me say it better. But but about ESPN that night would try to big up Tommy Tommy Schwartz. Like Tommy Schwartz, like 
Bro, the only person I know who actually watched him fight before I watched looked up his um his fights was Mr. Boxing today too, who knew who he was. Man, hey. Mr. Boxing today too knows who every heavyweight is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, who the hell is this guy? Mr. Boxing today has like a database of all the heavyweights and shit. <laughs> I know he's like, oh yeah, I know this guy. I'm like, how the hell you know this guy? This you guy fights this guy. in like to Gosco can or whatever country or never. <laughs> like if Mr. Boxing today was around. <laughs> In the seventy, he wouldn't know who Rocky Balboa was when. Yes, he would. When, when they announced him to fight Apollo Creed, everybody, who the fuck is this guy? Like, oh, I know who he is. <laughs> He's a southpaw oh, yeah. from uh, from Philadelphia. Got disqualified in that fight. Like what? How do you know this? Oh my God, man! I'm telling you, he showed. He definitely would know, man. So right well, now. Uh, it's about to go down, bro. I want this dude to get his ass beat. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, come, no. Come what he said. The, the Mexican style. I, I don't like that. When um, not nah, especially if you're a non-Mexican saying it. If you're not Mexican, don't be saying no shit like that, man. Don't disrespect. Like you don't want nobody disrespecting your culture. Like yeah, I'm gonna fight Japanese style. Definitely, and I know. <laughs> you know how would you know, how would like if Vargas would have said that he probably would have been annoyed. I mean, he probably would have been offended, and it would probably been people saying they're offended. So don't do that. That's what I said, but if, uh, unfortunately, it was another Mexican who started that shit, which was, um, which I would call, what would you guys call a sellout for uh, as far as Mexicans, man? What would you call a sellout Mexican? Coconut. A coconut. <laughs> we call us what we call it. We, we got all kind of names, buck dancers. I'm going I'm to keep the word clean. It starts with a C, <laughs> ends with an N, <laughs> word and all kind of stuff, all the times and all kind of stuff that we call, you know, black folks who do, do that. Well, yeah. we all know that's that's what the idiot known as uh, Abel Sanchez is. That dude is a disgrace. He's yeah. a, an absolute disgrace, man. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I don't know, man. You know what I hated was when they came out in the uh, well, not, not not they. I can't say they. It's one specific person. Hauser came out and was like, "Oh, the Ruiz is not Mexican. That that's all a marketing scheme." But he never said that about like Triple G or any of the other no. these other guys, you know. No, no, your Triple G is from Kazakhstan, right? He's not even remotely close. Nowhere near Mexico. Nowhere near. At least fucking California is attached to Mexico. Look, Shit, it some, used to be, some, it used to be Mexico. Go ahead. Now, now, look. If he came out and he said, "I'm gonna fight Margarito style," then then I wouldn't say anything. Right. You know what I mean? That's just, like, just the name of the particular person. Don't mean it's Mexican style. You know what I mean? Right. It's like if he said something like that, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight the uh, Soto Kara style. Okay, knock yourself out, right? right? Literally. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you don't get knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the, like when you just kind of say that, like, I don't know, man. I'd say I've always had an issue with that personally, but you know, it is what it is. What are you gonna do? Uh, but Vargas has a shot here to uh, <laughs> shut him up. You know what I mean? Right. No, I, I give I give um I will give Kamada credit for this. At least he moved to Mexico. He um, he got in touch. He you know he learned the culture. He respects the culture and stuff like that. But he should never say that you're a Mexican fighter, man. You're you're Japanese, bro. Just be Japanese. It's okay. You're Japanese living in the in Mexico now. Uh, he he got he got citizenship there in Mexico. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you know that's 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 all good, man. And he he picked up the language. He learns. He understands how to speak the language. And so and I so I I respect that. I do. I respect that, but but no good disrespect. No, because you want nobody to go to Japan and disrespect. You know, you know Japanese people, man. I, you know, say this is like I always say when you go to somebody else's country, or if you're talking about another culture, man, don't don't disrespect another culture, man. You don't want nobody disrespecting your culture. So that's what yeah, I stand. It's kind of like like it's kind of like if uh, Vargas would have gotten on the podium, right? Mm -hmm. It's just an example, but and he would have been like, I I know karate. I'm going to use my Japanese style in the ring. You watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Even like that, that would have wow, been wrong. Wow. Like people would have been like, "What the fuck did you just say?" You yep. know, like. <laughs> Arigato. What are you like, man? What are you saying? <laughs> Stop talking that shit like that. The people are like, "Oh man, you're being racist." <laughs> <Yeah. Right. laughs> I'm like, but but we're gonna we're not gonna try to act like that. That wasn't racist or offensive, but or whatever, man. Yeah. Like I said before, man. Abel Sanchez opened up the fucking door for this shit. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? He opened up the door. So now people are gonna continue to say this shit now. Because they think it's okay. Because Abel said, because because the Mexican dude said it. That's why I, I always hate to say hate the same thing when um black dudes do certain things and and say it's okay for other people to do shit. I'm like, come on, man, don't be doing that shit. 
<laughs> stop, 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 stop doing certain things and trying to um, stop disrespecting your own culture and saying it's okay for other people to disrespect your culture. So that's what Abel Sanchez said. He, he, first thing he brings up to, he said, well, you know, I'm from Mexico, but you know, but we know that we, we definitely know for certain. We definitely know for certain. Oh, look at this. Nacho Bernstein, bro. Look at this. Oh, Nacho Bernstein making his way, way back, man. Okay. What's yeah. up? He's got Vargas now. Uh, quick run that really quick. According to Box Shrek, uh, Ray Vargas ranked number two in the world, and Kimada is ranked number 18. Yeah. Uh, they're both 28 years of age. Both are orthodox. Seven, uh, they're five, seven each. Uh, that's kind of a pretty decent size, especially for that weight class. And yeah, I'm um, go, go ahead, good team. Well, well it's a, a 70 inch and a half reach by Vargas, over 67 inch reach by Kimala. He does have that, uh, you know, three and a half inch advantage. And uh, 33 and 0 with 22 knockouts is Vargas, and Kimala is 36 and 2 with 20 KOs. What was that, uh, Kelly? No, I'm saying no, but um. The thing about Andy Ruiz, so when his, his parents look, man, I understand this whole thing, man. I, I, I mean, I used to work at the Oakland Airport, man, and you would get Mexicans coming from, you know, flying through Taka Airline, and they would see Mexicans from Me from, from California, like, or Mexican from America, like, oh, you're not a real Mexican, and I'm like, what the hell is this? I said, this is the same thing that we still, as black folks get from the African and shit like that. That's all. That's the kind of what Abel Sanchez was doing to Andy Ruiz, man. It's fucked up, but I mean, I, I've seen it done before. It's stupid. It's fucking whoa, whoa, stupid. Whoa, 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 whoa. What what did Abel Sanchez say about Andy Ruiz? Well, he said he's not really Mexican. He said he's um he's from California. That's what he was saying. Oh, you no, know. Abel Sanchez is an idiot, man. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance he has to denigrate somebody, man, he's a piece of shit, man. Like, well, I don't even know why he would say that. Of course, he's Mexican. Like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> where you're born, like it's not like you're born and all your genes go away. Like, you know what I, mean? like, I don't know. Mom and dad in Mexico, so I guess that means he's he's white or something like I don't know. Man. All right, so <laughs> we got some people asking here. Uh, Chicano Prophet, good to see uh, Nacho in the corner. Absolutely. Uh, shout out to Chicano Prophet. And Air 2 Ground says, when is the main event, Omi? And it's about to start. They're announcing right now. I will do, I will do a play-by-play -play during the fight. And I'll, I'll let Callie uh, talk between rounds about what he's seeing in that fight, if that's all right. Oh no, no problem, man. <clears throat> no problem. You talking about um Kameda? Um, yeah. I mean, if yeah, if he he could fight with anyway, that is a big fight in Japan. So yeah. me, I mean, I mean, we'll see, man. Like we'll see, man. We got we got a lot of stuff coming. We'll see what happens, man. Me personally, Vargas could fight, um, yeah. could fight Monster too, man. You know, ain't no guarantee that Monster gonna beat all these dudes. We have Lana saying, "Who do you think's gonna win this? Do you have any official prediction, Kelly?" I'm going with Vargas, man. I'm going with Vargas too, man. Going Vargas. I will be doing a play-by-play -play for this fight, guys. And we'll have uh, Cal here helping with that breakdown between rounds. Oh, that's needy. The state of C's to fill up, man. A little bit. I think they changed the camera angle, bro. Yeah. They went to the right. They went to the right. And here we go. We're about to start this. You guys, listen in. Come on, look at this guy look in great shape, bro. Yeah. These little weight class guys, all muscle, bro. It's crazy. Metal of the ring, red trunks, Vargas, white and blue. Kamala Vargas right away with that jab, and he's moving. Kamala is the aggressor here. Although we just got started. They're just probing with those shots. Vargas circling to his left right now. He's got those nice trunks here, Mexican colors, and he goes with a double jab. He uses that. When he misses the jab, he leaves it sticking out, and he moves back. To, to get that range, Kamala coming in here. He's being aggressive. It doesn't look like uh, Vargas bought that whole come forward thing because he's still fighting his game. He's moving Mark. to his left. Double jab. They're clinching. The ref's going to break him up any moment now, I assume. There we go. Back to center of the ring. Jab by Kamala upstairs. Jab upstairs by Vargas and a body shot to the body. Or a shot to the body, I should say. Kamala got him against the ropes, but Vargas gets out of there. Graze him upstairs, Kamala did. Now they're jabbing both here. Double jab by Vargas. Vargas boxing smart. 1-1-2 one, one, misses by Vargas. Here comes Kamala. Nice. Uh, he's really quick uh, with his head, Kamala. He moves that head real quick. Yeah. 
Hook and a jab missed by Vargas. Kamala comes in with a double jab. Right upstairs by Vargas lands. As, uh, I'm sorry, Kamala lands as he threw a three punch combination. Double jab by Vargas through the gloves of Kamala. He's feeling him out. These guys are trying to find range right now. Jab by Vargas. Vargas waiting, probing. Kamala landed a hook there as, it were, uh, as Vargas was backing away. Vargas double jab. Guard up. He's got a high guard, Vargas. Kamala has a lower guard. Vargas misses a right hand. So far, nothing really landing for Vargas. Kamala has landed some shots. Left upstairs. Uh, landed Kamala. Now they're missed by Vargas. Vargas misses again. Kamala circling to his left, and he gets hit with a jab. And Kamala looks like he was about to go for a double leg or some shit. But they're separated. Back to the center of the ring. Vargas throws a left. Vargas throws a three-punch combination. They all missed. And he gets grazed upstairs by Kamala. They're tangled up right now. Both guys don't need the red to break them up. They break each other up. They're back in mid-range. 25 seconds left to go in the round. Double jab by Vargas, but it just grazes. Jab to the body attempted by Vargas does not land. The Japanese fighter is fast. Can he catch up to him? He's having a hard time hitting Kimada. Right hand by Kimada upstairs. Left by Kimada. And Kimada's backing up here. Right hand upstairs. That overhand right. Vargas cannot catch up to him yet, Kelly. How do you see yeah, that round? That, that speed, man. You definitely see the speed advantage for Kimada, man. He definitely, he's definitely had the quicker hands. He definitely had, he's definitely the better athlete. There's still some – I still see some of the things that he's he, – but he's definitely changed. Uh, he's not as flashy. I don't know if you remember when he first came, man. Yeah. He had the ponytail, the long hair. He would dye his hair pink. He would have the, the girls <laughs> with him. He's definitely changed, man. He's definitely uh, made some changes to his – not to his style, but just to his if, overall look. I'm if, talking about Kameda, so. If, if you're not sure, what do you tell? How, how do you catch up to this guy? How do you slow him down? Uh, I think he, he, he's got to go to counterpunching, man. Or, I think he's going to have to go to counterpunching. Or um, he's going to have to try to come forward and just let his hands go. But in my opinion, he's tall. The best thing he can do is you, you stick that jab and and, and and just continue to move. He could continue to move laterally and just try to counter. But I would, I would wait. I would definitely try to wait and try to let him make him come to me. Make Kameda come to me and try to time him coming in. That's the only thing I would do. Because I, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to be able to um, to outbox him. On a, I mean, especially just continue to, you know, stay behind the jab and definitely and um, again coming forward. I think he should just stay. I think he just stay back with just let Kameda come to him and just try to counter him from there, man. Because Absolutely. when usually when you got a fighter that's faster than you, then it's the best thing you could do, especially if you have the counter punching ability. Uh, I'm pretty sure Vargas has that in his, in his repertoire. He should sit back and let him counter, just counter, so, man. So, so right now Vargas is moving away here, and Kameda is the aggressor. But Kameda does a great job keeping himself at mid range. He's not stuffing his own work, and he's getting the best of our Vargas. Having a really hard time catching up to this uh, very quick Japanese fighter. But we will see if he could do some jab landed by Vargas. He goes for that uppercut. It did not land, however. He missed that right hand again. Such a yeah. good job by Kameda. He steps back right on time to make a miss, and he steps right back in. Kameda Ooh, making a right. uh, miss here, and then right to the body goes Vargas. I think he needs to go to the body a little more. Hook landed by Vargas. He is now, he's doing just like Kelly said, he's waiting for him to come in, and he's landing. But Kameda did land upstairs right now a moment ago, uh, right over the guard by Vargas. Kameda with a hook lands. Vargas circles away. He does not exchange, however. He's waiting. Jab by Vargas. Timing does beat speed. Can he time the yep. Japanese fighter? Ran out body shot by Vargas. Vargas gets clipped upstairs just as he was going to throw a right hand. He's starting to go to the body. Both guys are throwing shots. Kameda goes down, but he slipped. It was a slip. It was not, it was not a punch that knocked him down. The clock is running. Let's go. A minute and 13 seconds left in the round. Vargas. Right to the body by Vargas. That's going to slow down a Japanese fighter. And he has to time him here. Jab thrown by Vargas. He's throwing it not as lazy anymore. He's being more assertive with that jab now. Right to the body by Vargas. That might have been blocked by the elbow of Kameda. Kameda with a right hand upstairs. With Vargas leads with an uppercut. He lands a body shot. Kameda landing on gloves there. 
Hooked by Vargas, blocked by Kameda. He goes to the body, borderline shot. He throws a combination. He goes to the left hand. With the left hand to the body, Kameda. Kameda stalking. He gets hit to the body again. Vargas keeping it mid-range. He lands a, a, a kind of pine jab. Throws a right block by Kameda. Kameda is just waiting here. He's getting hit with jabs as he comes in. 18 seconds into the round. Body shot landed by Vargas. Kameda comes in with two jabs, but he misses. Vargas yeah, is making Kameda ball. follow him. A 1-2 by Vargas. A, a, a right hand by Kameda, I think, Grace Vargas. We're about to end this round. Kameda misses a hook, and Vargas misses a right hand. Bell, Kelly, how do you see that? Yeah, <clears throat> I thought I thought Kameda won that round. <clears throat> in, in my opinion, I see an opportunity for more counter shots. When Kameda throws that overhand right, it's 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 so it's so over the top. In my opinion, I think it's it's so looping that I believe he can shoot that straight right hand right down the middle and beat him. I think he can beat him to the punch with a straight right hand. I really believe that. It's, it's just timing. If he times it right, he can, shoot him. he can hit him with a straight right hand. But what he needs to do is keep his left hand up so he doesn't get hit with those overhand rights. He's been getting hit nailed with those over and over and over again. And I, it's just a simple – it's just something as simple just leaving your glove up, man. And he just – for whatever reason, Vargas won't do it. But if Vargas he could do that, he could parry that shot and counter with a straight right hand. What right about the down right the to the body. I think I think Vargas did a good job landing that right to the body. He could throw he could throw more uh, rights to the body. The, those yeah. are available too. He could also, in my opinion, instead of jabbing jabbing to the head, he, once again, I think it's a little uh, underrated um, use Jabs of the body. jab. The jab to the body, man. Jab Absolutely. to the chest. Absolutely. And we're back in the center of the ring. We're, we're live right now with Kelly and Enigma. We're covering this fight. Look at this. They're in the center of the ring. And I'll tell you right now, Vargas answering that phone with his right hand. He's keeping that uh, front hand forward, ready to strike with that jab. Will he mix it up a little more, go to the body more to slow down the much faster fighter, Kameda? Kameda's going to the jab, throwing the jab to the body. Something Vargas is not doing. Vargas just threw a jab to the body. He missed it, but at least he attempted now, right now, there's a lot of posturing going on. They're trying to get a hook in, both guys. A lot of posturing. And Kameda's throwing jabs to the body here, or straight to the body, I should say. Um, and right now, Vargas is he's trying to set up. Nice left to the body by Vargas. He didn't finish throwing that right to the body. I don't know what that's about. And then, again, he's trying to go upstairs. Kameda trying to aim for that for that uh, right hand, he's holding Vargas. The ref warns or uh, gives a stern warning to Kameda. We're back to the center of the ring. Vargas misses a right hand, but he but he threw it looping. He needs to throw it straight so it, could, it's, it's, it takes less time when he throw it in a straight line. Right hand, he just threw it right there, straight line, landed on Kameda. Kameda has that cross um, kind of shell defense. Now he has a high guard. They exchange a little bit there. Jab, jab, and uh, goes to the body, does Vargas. Vargas goes to the body again. Uh, Kameda did catch him upstairs, however. Kameda with a hook upstairs, graze Vargas. Vargas gets clipped with a right hand upstairs. Kameda has him against the ropes. He missed a lot of those combination punches. But, man, does he punch fast. A 1-1-2 one, one, by Vargas. He grazed the jabs. He missed the right hand. He's trying to leave with an uppercut. Bad idea. He missed, but he hit those two body shots. He lands a jab. Kameda holds the hands up saying, come on. Headlock. Right now, we got 51 seconds left in this round. Vargas is coming here forward. Kameda goes to the body. Kameda fainting. Vargas coming forward now. They're in the center of the ring mid-range. 1-1-2 one, one, by Vargas. That does not land. Vargas, he throws a jab and uppercut, misses. Kameda clipped him with that uh, with that hook, just barely clipped him. Kameda landing on gloves there. Vargas, I think, got him with a hook. He lands two punches to the gloves, tries to get an uppercut, but nothing lands. But right to the body by Vargas. Vargas goes upstairs, but blocked by glove. He lands a right hand right to the guard, does Vargas. Ten seconds to go. Vargas now missing that right hand by a mile. Kameda ends the round throwing a two-punch combination. Callie, how do you see that round? Yeah, man, that's a that's a close round. 
Yep. Um, I gave a slight edge to Vargas. I thought he landed some nice body shots in that round. Uh, but I, 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 was, I would still like to see uh, – I know this will sound crazy. I would like to see Vargas be a little bit more patient. I still think I still see uh, more counterpunching opportunities for him if, yep. he just, if he's just a little bit more patient. And they're there. Uh, he should go to the body a little bit more. And um, I, I, w- I would like him to control range a little bit better. I don't think – I think he's fighting – I think he needs to fight at distance. And and try to yeah. enforce Kameda to come in. He could catch Kameda coming in, but he's still, in my opinion, still still not. He's he's still missing too many opportunities. Like I said, man, uh, he did throw the straight right hand there in, in Atlanta. It's there's when he he could catch him with the straight right hands are available all night, whenever. But you got to catch. But you have to punch with Kameda. I know it's tough because Kameda's so fast. <laughs> and the gap to it is pretty pretty wide. And but, but you got you got to punch with him, man. That's the only way. El cuarto asalto. That's the fourth round. And right now, Kameda is putting pressure here. He goes to the body. One has to question whether this is Kameda has the right game plan here, but it's working so far right to the body by Vargas. Kameda's bringing it to him, that's for sure. Vargas circling around the ring, back almost against the ropes. Kameda's trying to corner him. Kameda with a two-punch combination upstairs. Vargas holds. He gets, he gets away from the ropes. They're back in the center of the ring. Kameda coming forward here. Vargas circling to his left. Kameda with a right hand. Vargas bounces off the ropes. He comes back with a double jab. Vargas goes down, but that's a slip. Definitely looks like a slip here. Make sure you guys throw a jab. Throw a jab at that like button as you come in. Right now, Vargas speaking of jabs, throws a jab. He misses another jab. Uh, those jabs are not landing with authority. He throws to the body, but that, that, that right hand was not with authority. Vargas said he was going to bring it. He said he was going to break Kameda. We'll see. He lands some jabs Damn, there. Another jab. Cut. Hooks. The uppercut opportunities, too, available for him, man. Most definitely. He just... He's going with those hooks right now. And, and Kameda's definitely <laughs> pressuring him, but you're right. He bends low when he comes in. A nice left hook by Kameda lands, but Vargas ate it, man. He has a chin. We know that. He has to pressure, I think, Kameda. I think he's going to have to bring the pressure because it's moving around the ring. is not working for him. Jab landed by him. Uh, Vargas lands to the body, but Kameda comes upstairs with a hook of his own. Block shots upstairs. He may have Kameda. to pressure him, man. He may have to pressure him. That's that's unfortunate because he's so much taller. It's gonna. He's not. I don't know if he's going to be able to get much leverage on the shots, man. Well, he has that's, to keep it. You know in, what I mean? Uh, that's- absolutely. He could pressure him to where he keeps it in mid range, I think, uh, more than mm. anything. He doesn't necessarily <clears throat> have to bull rush him. But jab landed by uh, Vargas. But, you know, here comes Kameda with a better hook. That's going to stand out more. Vargas throwing that hook, the jab. He landed it at times, but he has to follow it up with something. Kameda is pressuring him. He's going to the body. He threw it right to the body there as Vargas steps away. Vargas hits a hook. Vargas leans, he kind of leans over. He's open to a counter when he misses the hook. He's got to be careful there. Yeah. Jab landed by Vargas. 25 seconds left in the round. Another jab by Vargas, although it kind of grazed on the top of the head of Kameda. That jab did not land. Jab to the body by Vargas. He gets hit upstairs with a right by Kameda. And right now, Vargas is waiting. He's waiting. He's throwing a jab. He throws a three punch combination, misses. Kameda clips him upstairs. Hooked by Vargas, hooked by Kameda. And now Vargas is stepping to his left. He's coming forward, and the bell rings. How do you see that round? Yeah, Kameda making <clears throat> me. I got. I gave that round to Kameda, man. I mean, Vargas. He just. He's only landing one shot, man. When he does land a shot, it's one shot. Nothing. He's not followed up with nothing. Kameda's doing a good, really good job of stepping out of range, um, using lateral movement, and just stepping, just stepping, just out of range, uh, making it very difficult for. For Vargas to follow up um, any sh- shot that he does land with something else, so um, he, I think that I think that it's it's obvious that Vargas is gonna start using some feints too, man. He's just he's gonna start mixing in feints and and, and and in order to try to time him, man. Because I mean, I don't know if he's gonna win this fight, man. I think this, the speed is he's having a lot of problems with the speed uh, of of Kameda, man. The, the speed and athleticism is giving him a ton of problems. Something that I was not expecting. I'm I'm sh- I'm shocked. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm stu- I'm stunned by this. Look at that body. Vargas, I mean, he's I, I, he can have to change. He got to change his game plan. But I do think, like I said, it's counter punching opportunities. But I, he looks more frustrated in there than anything else. 
Uh, Vargas with his inability to land multiple combinations. El quinto asalto, round five. They're in the center of the ring. And right now, Vargas is trying to counter him. He's missing those hooks when he tries to counter. He's got to start throwing where Kameda's going to be, now where Kameda is. Yeah. He has to do a better yep. job countering here. And right now, Kameda is definitely a fast fighter, man. Now, will he slow down? Will he run out of gas? We'll see. Vargas uh, tripling that jab. But is he going to commit to throwing a straight right? He did have some success with that right hand in the second round. Yep. Can he bring that back? Right now, jab by Vargas. They're tied up right now. The ref tells them to break it up. They break up. Right now, Vargas, he goes to the right to the body, and he tries to go for an uppercut. He needs to stop bleeding with that uppercut. It's not working. And right now, <laughs> he Kameda is still pressuring him here. I don't know. I still don't know that's the right idea for Kameda, but he comes here with a right upstairs. Vargas landed some arm punches on the inside. They're broken up. They're back to the center of the ring, mid-range. Vargas throwing that jab. Kameda trying to find an opening here. Vargas landing on the gloves of Kameda right now. Another jab landed to the gloves. Vargas throws a right. He landed a right hand inside. He's got to put punches together more because he had success right there. And, and I hate to say it, he might even have to exchange. You know, sometimes when you got a faster fighter than you, you don't have a choice. Right now, you gotta Vargas, sell out to try to try to land punches. Absolutely, Vargas trying to set up. Uh, Vargas landed a right hand, right. Kameda uh, walked right into it. He's got to catch him doing that. All right, another. Uh, Kameda blocked most of those, but he got some body shots in there. Vargas, Vargas doing a little better here. There's there's a green light for any Vargas fans, including myself. Vargas is using his shoulder as a shield. His his lead hand is down. All right. And what's going on here? Hold on. My thing froze. Kelly, call the fight. My thing froze. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here watching, man. I don't know if it happens, man. Okay, you got Vargas just popping the jab. Kameda's dropping his hands. But but they said now that Vargas just flipped up, just flicked out a, a jab. It didn't, it didn't even get close. Uh, there's really nothing going on right now. He just he flicked the jab. He missed. And like, it mattered, that was a clash of heads. Uh, did just a minute ago. So we got. I've been twenty seconds behind you on the rounds. We got oh. about uh, thirty nine seconds left in the round. Here we go. There we go. I'm back on. I'm back on. Right. Twenty two seconds to go. Okay. Yeah, cool. Varkas okay. now throws. I don't know what happened. The zone issues. I guess. All right. <laughs> Jeff, let it. <laughs> or my internet. One or the other. Right hand by Vargas, but uh, Kameda is pressuring him here. Vargas is trying to get that jab in, and uh, Kameda comes from behind, and you know that whole Lomachenko move. All right. And yeah. now uh, Vargas, uh, the bell rings. That's it. That's that's the round. This is the you know round, man. The round I, felt, I, I felt Vargas won. Now, I'm not convinced the tight has turned, you know, but you, what is he positive in that round for Vargas, Kelly? Um, he, he started to he started to land straight right hands in that round, which I liked. Uh, he started to throw a couple of body shots. He did land a couple of hooks, but because he shortened the hooks, though, that's one of the reasons why he landed them. He shortened hooks instead of throwing the, the wide looping hooks. He threw a couple shorter hooks and it was and it connected. It's a funny thing, huh? When you throw kind of more compact punches against a faster fighter house, you can actually land some shots. <laughs> You're not throwing a bunch of wide shots. So that I, I want to see him. I, I hope that he can picks this up and continues to shorten his shots. And straight punches are okay. the best way to go when you got a faster guy. Right, because it's just it's it's just common, it's common sense, right? When you loop a punch, it just takes a lot longer for it to get there. You know, the, those right. punches have to be masked, you know, but he landed a good right hand there, you know, in that round. Yeah, he did, but he, was, but he hit it with the he, – he used the jab. Absolutely. He used the jab to land that right hand. And that's – he needs to stab, stay, stay behind it. And he needs to continue to, to pop the jab more. But, and, and, you know, use that jab. Use that jab to – to, man, to, to, to to debilitate him for a little bit, man. You know, a, a jab, especially a good jab, you know, and you, you, got, you got to change the speed of your jab. You can't throw the same jab over and over and over again. Otherwise, he's going to pick it up. He's going to start slipping the jab and countering you. Absolutely. Now, now so, um, these guys are back in the center of the ring here. Um, not a lot has happened so far in this round, uh, but uh, right now Vargas is throwing that jab. Uh, he threw a three-punch combination. He's got to put punches together, I think. You'll catch him yeah. in an exchange because Kameda, for whatever reason, is willing to exchange. Yeah. Um, so I think he could catch yep. him with that. 
And that's where the hooks come in. That's where those looping punches will pay off for you. Yep. But to lead, you got to start with that straight punch. A three punch combination by Vargas. Uh, the the gloves are blocking, the, but the upstairs, but downstairs, he's landing. It's a lot harder. It's easier to move your head than your body. Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, but a hook landed by Camino. Vargas doesn't seem willing to exchange, though. It's not. Man, this name must, doesn't seem to be his personality. He's willing to exchange, but yeah. he could probably land some bigger shots if he's done. Camino with a leaping exchange, hook. But those body shots are beautiful. Right hand by Vargas, and he comes back with an uppercut on the inside. Camino mm -hmm. actually missing some punches here. Yep. And I'm telling you right now, jabs to the face, man. They, 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 they put strain on the back of your neck. It does help fatigue you. So that's why Vargas got to yep. keep throwing. He's got to have faith on his jab. He can't give it up. I disagree with uh, Christian NWO saying he has to abandon it. I think that would be a terrible no, idea. No, no, no. Yeah. That's a horrible idea, especially <laughs> if the fastest fighter. Yeah. The last thing he do is give him a jab. Not just that. Give up a jab and give up his height. It's stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Now, now right now, he, they're in the center of the ring. Vargas clips him with a short hook. I think Vargas is starting to find home a little more here. Grace him with a right hand. That was close. 51 seconds left in the round. Vargas, you know, getting that guard up as, uh, you know, Kameda comes in. He's waiting for the ref to break it up. Vargas needs to learn how to fight off of the clinch himself instead of waiting for the ref. Right now, Vargas lands a short hook inside. He lands some more upstairs. Vargas does. Vargas missing some punches there. He leads with an uppercut again. The hook of Kameda gets blocked by Vargas's guard. Vargas comes in with a double jab. Uh, and Vargas is just trying to get some gauge distance with that jab now. He's still trying to throw that uppercut after the jab. I, I don't know why he's doing that. It's, it's atrocious, man. He should he should abandon. That's what he should abandon is that uppercut. Yeah, they, they traded that punches. one. Absolutely. And, and Kameda throws upstairs, but he misses. Vargas lands on gloves. Kameda with a short shopping hook upstairs. And that's the round. I saw that round for Vargas, but it was close. How do you see that Me round? Me too. But hey, I'm going to tell you what's on that yep. uppercut. He's throwing it from too far away it's just to start with. You know, if you're going to throw an uppercut, you need to be, you need to get in range. He's, he, I mean, he's not even getting close with that, with that, um, that uppercut to start with. And the punches that have been most effective of what was, what was most effective in the last round, short hooks and straight punches. <laughs> Those are the ones that are landing. It's common sense. You have, if he sticks with that, he'll win. He'll win the fight because, and I, I think he's starting to take control of the fight, in my opinion. Via the jab, I and I don't understand why uh, I, don't, I don't know who that was in the chat when we said abandon the jab. If he abandons the jab, you're gonna lose the fight. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you that right now. If he abandons the jab, he will lose the fight. He's starting to he's turning the fight around because he's using the jab. The jab is what allowed him to, to take control of the fight. Absolutely. You know, Kameda Kameda is just wow, man. I mean, Kameda needs to he should need the jab himself. And now, speaking of Kameda, he's now in the center of the ring, round seven. El asalto numero siete. Kameda, on the center, I'm not going to call him Spanish. Right, Kameda throws a hook. <laughs> People will be like, what the fuck am I listening? I can understand some of Jab. it, man. I can understand some Spanish. Jab by Vargas. He is starting to land that jab a little more now. Now, Kameda throwing a jab himself. Now, Vargas has to deal with that. I think we'll have a hard time if Kameda actually commits to that. And jabs by Vargas landing through the guard. I think it's disrupting the rhythm of Kameda so far. Kameda, to me, is – I'm not saying he's fatigued or tired, but he is looks like he's slowing down. Jab by Vargas, hook upstairs by Kameda. And Kameda looks like he's looking for that one big moment to, to – you know, uh, 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 to unleash a, a combination, but it's not coming because that jab is keeping him off uh, balance a little bit. It's it's disrupting his rhythm. And Kameda is holding Vargas throwing with a free hand. I think this fighter's got to throw more with a free hand until the ref says break. Jab by Kameda. Lands Vargas still not quite man. He's just he's just he's getting it's it's like he's getting closer with that right hand every round. Okay, he's going to the body there. I think Kameda felt some of the, 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 the bodies, man. And he's got him in a headlock, does Vargas. The ref breaks it up. And they're in the center of the ring. We're halfway through round seven. Right now, uh, short little hooks by Kameda. Jab by Vargas. Jab by Vargas. Or oh, right hand, I'm sorry, by Vargas. Vargas doing a really good job keeping that right hand up. He lands the right hand on Kameda. That was a straight down the pipe. Now, those are the ones he has to throw. 
They're separated yep. again. And here we go. Kameda throwing some. He's throwing wide here. He's getting a little sloppy. He did land that hook, though. He landed that hook and a three punch combination. Jab, cross, jab by Vargas. They're in the center of the Getting ring. Getting the timing now. Kameda's coming in, and Vargas trips to the ground. I don't know what Var Vargas was about to bust out a dance move there or something. Or like a break dance. <laughs> All right, the jab by Vargas. It's starting to land. It's starting to get a little more snappy. Okay, he throws hooks. The right graze Kameda. All right. Vargas is just being patient. Vargas on his toes now. Jab to the body Vargas throws. I think I'd like to see a little more of that, to be honest with you. Vargas with a jab. It gets Kameda off balance. He's feeling himself. Jab. Kameda with a hook, raise them, jab, land by Vargas. The jab looked good in this Vargas round, is in Kelly. a rhythm. Now, I want to ask yeah, you. Yeah, Vargas, Vargas is in a rhythm. I want to ask you, if you're in the corner of Kameda, what do you tell him? Well, what do he has to do? What do you think? Uh, I think he needs to jab his way on the inside. Him, I think he needs to jab his way on the inside and go to the body. That's what I think he needs to do. And if you want to throw a combination, stop head hunting and go to the body. That's what he needs to do to say. He needs to do. He needs to do. He needs to fight like the smaller guy and get on the inside and take advantage and right. go to the body and work the body. But I got to say, shout out to Nacho Berenstein, man. All of his fighters fight intelligently, man. I mean, for real. I, 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 I always enjoy. I enjoy watching his fighters fight, man. He's one of the best trainers in boxing, man. Underrated guy um, that been around a long time. And let's say you, you, you just don't see his fighters go out there and fight like a moron. Never. Never shot the match. That jab, man. It set up that right hand. That was beautiful. I don't see if you've seen that replay right now. That was a jab, jab, cross, bro. And yep. it, it, that was beautiful. And remember some of those left hooks to the body? Those digging, um, and those digging hooks and uppercuts yep. to the body are starting to land now. They were missing early in the fight against yep. the Mater, and now they're landing because why? Timing. Because yep. he used that jab and, and the time he started to time him. He started the time stuff, but the jab and all that started to wear him. That started to wear Kameda down. Kameda's not throwing with the same volume. He's not moving around as much. And and, and it's showing. He's, I mean, he, Vargas is more effective now. He's taking control of the fight. Estamos en el asalto número ocho. Round number eight. They're in the middle of the ring. I think Kameda's going to get knocked out, man. I don't know. Uh, jabs by Vargas. He's backing up, but Kameda is doing all the work for him. He's following him. He's not cutting off the ring. And Vargas moving left, moving right, making Kameda miss. Kameda clips him a little bit there, but Vargas gets away. Vargas in the middle of the ring. Vargas didn't fall for this fight like a Mexican. Come forward and just trade. He didn't fall for that. He's definitely nope. utilizing his jab. And look at that. Answering the phone with that right hand. It, it's Kameda knows if he throws that hook, he's gonna he's gonna get blocked and he's he's gonna get countered. Kameda still. When you say following. any Berenstein fighters fight stupid, when do you first see any uh, not to Berenstein fighters fight stupid? Never. And, if, and if they fight around stupid, he strains them out. Okay, and they, they come out differently <laughs> in the next round. Okay, and right yep. now, uh, Kameda pressuring some of those punches getting in, but Vargas stays patient. Kameda picks him up. He was going for a double leg or something. I don't know. All right, Kameda is coming forward still. Can Vargas show that he's a different level here? Kameda throwing a lot of those. He, Vargas rolled with those punches against the ropes. Yep. And that's why I said he's 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 throwing. He's head hunting instead of going to the body. Absolutely. The body's where he needs to go. Vargas smiles at Kameda. He throws a one-two uppercut. Finally, just grazes Kameda. And he, body shot, but with his left hand landed by Vargas. One minute to go in this round. Fifty-two seconds to go. And right now they're in the inside. Kameda's holding a lot. Is he tired? I don't know. We'll see. Right now, Vargas. Getting out class right. now, man, to me. Yeah, body shot to the right by Vargas lands. Vargas faints, and then he lands a jab. He lands a jab again. He needs to use some more feints. It worked right there. Vargas is taking Kameda to school in this round, in my opinion. Kameda had some moments. But can Kameda turn this around? He got 20 seconds to steal this round, maybe, on some judges. Jab landed by Vargas. 
once Vargas finds home with that right, it's going to be over, I think, because he's barely missing that right hand after he lands a jab. Kameda almost slides to the to the ropes. Good round for Vargas, I think. Uh, did he see something different than me, Kelly? Nah, man. I, I think I think I think Vargas is starting to show that he's um, just in a different class. Smarter fighter, man. I'm not trying to be funny. Kameda has some tools that you would like, like nice speed, nice lateral movement. And me, I, I think there's things that you could do if Kameda needs to switch trainers. In my opinion, yeah, I like I like some of the tools that he has. He just doesn't fight. He doesn't fight. He doesn't fight right. The right fight, man. Kameda so has easy. natural abilities that many fighters wish they had. Yeah. You know. Yep. Like, you know, and, and it's it's a shame when you see a fighter just throw away natural gifts. You know. Nah. If you with with his gifts, if he had the right training, he he'd beat Vargas. If he had Nacho <laughs> Bernstein, <laughs> right? Yeah, he should go get Nacho Bernstein. He needs to go get him himself. <laughs> Nacho, go listen. What Nacho go work with him more? I mean, or, I mean, he, that's what he's down to make. Or he can get him. Or he can. Man, there's a lot of trainers. Man, he can get. He can come to America and get a trainer. I don't care. But there's, there's you can work with Kamada, man. There's something there. Still, he's only 28. Yeah, he's only definitely. 28. This, this, uh, you can see his kid. His career can be salvaged. He has tools. He just, right. he just needs to switch trainers, man. Asalto numero nueve. Both guys exchange on the inside. You guys make sure you throw a jab at the light button like uh, Vargas just threw a jab at Kameda's face. All right. One, two by Vargas. The right hand grazed. Jab to the body. Kameda, he's feeling something because, look, he's putting his hands out. He's trying to play possum right now because he knows what's happening. Uh, right now they're breaking it up. All right. I think he felt that jab to the body. That's why he put his hands out like that. All right. Throw the jab to the body again. Start it again, Vargas. Kameda misses a hook. Two minutes to go in a round. Jab, jab, cross lands by Vargas. Just got him in the chin, just barely. Vargas with a high guard. Kameda has both hands down. I know that's a good idea. Vargas needs to just keep coming forward. Don't worry about the possum plane and just land a jab. Body shot by Vargas. Is Kameda running out of ideas? Vargas, yeah, I, you know, I don't think Vargas. I don't think Kameda's um tiring. I think Kameda's frustrated. It's I me. agree. Absolutely. I think that's what I mean. He's running out of ideas. Body shot to the left side by Vargas. Vargas needs to keep utilizing that jab. Okay, he lands like even even that right hand landed on the glove of Kameda, but just keep throwing it because your offense is your defense at this point. Right, Kameda with a nice hook right there, but yeah. Vargas took it. Vargas could take the – I think he's showing he could take Kameda's best shot, and he knows this now. Okay, but he's still moving the ring. He's moving to his right. Okay, he throws a jab, and then he mixes it up. Sometimes he goes left. Sometimes he goes right. Body shots, uppercuts to the body by Vargas. They're both tied up. The ref breaks it up. Got to become a ref, man. I'll get a good workout just doing that shit. Right. <laughs> The referee diet plan, huh? The referee yeah. exercise plan. The exchange inside. The jab landed by, you know, uh, Vargas. I, I could ref uh, these guys. I can't ref fucking heavyweights. Fuck that. All right, but. Uh, so it's about Dillian White. My, Dillian White wild ass may hit you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get knocked out or some shit or trying to separate the dudes. Like, uh, I could separate these dudes. Right, right now, Kameda with an overhand left. <laughs> Kameda trying to land one big shot, it seems to me. Like, it's where's the plan? Where's the tactic? Although it's a more competitive round than the last round. Vargas moving that right hand. What is he signaling? Interesting round. How do you see that round, Kelly? Uh, that's the I guess, I mean, I, I still got to give it to Vargas, man. I mean, Kameda, yeah. he just, I don't know what the hell he's trying to do, man. The body's there from the attack. Uh, I guess the Danny Ramon is looking to fight the winner of this fight. Is, is that the, what the case it is? Is that what they're trying to show? Probably. But, um, that, I mean, that's a good fight. He's a good fighter too, man, um, Danny Ramon. He's still, the funny thing, still advised by Al Heyman. But, um, so, but it's with Eddie Hearn now, of all people, whatever, man. So I don't know the subject, subject but... Um, I would like to see, like I said, I, I would like to see uh, Vargas just come out there. Just There's no reason to even try to go for the knockout. He's winning the fight, clearly, in my opinion. 
Uh, I think he should continue to stay behind that jab and just um, cruise to an easy 12-round decision. Is Kameda going to continue to fight like a moron? He's not really going to go to the body. And um, there's no reason to do anything. Just throw the jab, mix in the right hand, and just keep popping the jab, man. Don't, there's nothing, no reason to do much else. And just and you'll win easily. Because, Absolutely. I mean, Kameda's not really landing anything anymore. There's no reason to change that game plan right there. Just stick to the easy win. Question says, Kameda doesn't even have an uppercut in his arsenal, and it seems that way. We're now in the middle of the ring. This is el asalto numero 10, round number 10. For those asking in the chat, I say it every round, guys. Every round, I say the round. Am I, am I right? I don't know. But, yep. uh, all right, uh, we're 30 seconds in to the 10th round. Kameda's hitting to the back of the head, rabbit punches. Ref warns him or just tells him not to do it, I guess. Okay, hook landed by... Vargas, I think Vargas can start a punch as a jab and turn it to a hook, in my opinion, a Razor Ruddock style. Yeah. I think it'll land, but I don't know if that's something that, like, he's taught, been taught. Okay, hook, hook, landed by Vargas, a hook by Kameda. Kameda's still stalking, but he's following. Vargas yeah. has been don't, using don't his ring. ring. Don't, don't believe the stereotypes. The Mexican is using the ring, Okay. And he's utilizing the jab, and he lands a one-two, and he's and he's got like a shell going instead of a high guard as Vargas at times. He mixes it up. He gives him a different look, and I don't know if it's taking Kameda time to process. You know, like you know, now now you have a high guard, now you got the shell. What the fuck, right? It's taking him time to process that, and and look, right now he's got a lower guard. Does Vargas now a high guard? He just mixes it up, you know. So you, you got to give him credit for that, man. These these nacho fighters really do fight smart. Right hand upstairs I'm by Kameda. Didn't land the right hand there, but uh, here comes another right hand by Kameda. Maybe Kameda's going to make a comeback. He lands a straight left, but Vargas takes the punch very well, and he doesn't start to exchange. He lets Kameda have his moment, and he just goes back to doing what he's doing, and he goes back to the jab. It looks like this is working. Boxing conversation with Joe in hand. the house. Right hand by Vargas. Plenty of body to hit. Oh, right hand by Kameda, dude. He landed that, but short hook by Vargas. Kameda's coming on. This is the best Kameda round in, in like six rounds already. All right, so Kameda's doing some. Can Vargas, you know, put him, you know, can he sit him down again in terms of, you know, just, just take him down a peg? Uh, can Vargas do that right now? He has got 30 seconds to show that you're not going to win this fight. All right? We're in the Throw championship round. Mixing the stiff jab again. Yeah, Mixing got, the stiff jab. Right hand by Vargas. He utilized his, his jab as a range finder. Bam, landed it. Right hand upstairs again by Vargas. This time he looped it a little bit like an overhand. Uppercut inside. Hey, the rep didn't break you up. What are you looking at the ref for, Kameda? All right, let's go. Jab by Vargas. And Vargas again. Oh, Kameda comes in. He pulled away. Kameda. And, and <laughs> he, uh, he tried to steal the round, but I think one out of like those four punches landed. How did he see that round? Uh, Kelly. Yeah, that's the Vargas round to me, man. I'm, I mean, Kameda only landed like three really good punches in the entire round. The rest of the round was controlled by by Vargas, man, with the jab, mixing in the right hands, throwing in a couple hooks to the body, man. He's just using that jab. Even though he's using a range fighter as, as a range fighter, he's still landing it. And and he's also, and, and at times, he's using that. He's popping the jab, popping the jab. Then he was mixing the right hand, and the right hand is landing. It's it's right. it's clear to me that Vargas won that round and, again. And, as Kameda, it's just head hunting, man. Kameda's head hunting. If Kameda yeah. would be going, would have been going to the body. I think we might yeah. have an opportunity for a different fight, but he's not doing Absolutely. it. There's plenty of body for a Kameda to hit. I mean, it's just not in this arsenal, I guess. Well, I tell you what, um, you know the, the 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 reason fighters use it as a range finder, it's not just right to so you can gauge that right hand. Yeah. You block the view with that glove. It's an eight ounce glove. Like you yep. can't see anything. Yep. And when he finally removes it, bam, you get hit in the face, you know? So I yep. think he's doing a good job with that, man. Uh, right now, double, triple jab by Vargas and they're clinching. Should Vargas be comfortable right now? I don't know. You never know what judges, but because uh, yeah, you, you never know. know. I, I would like to believe that the judges can see. I mean, I always say, I always hope that a lot, but we know I'm wrong a lot of times. You know, <laughs> I would like to hope that they can see, but to me, I think it's pretty clear that Vargas is winning this fight. Vargas pretty wide, head down. in my opinion. Vargas puts the head down. The ref tells him, hey, don't do it. They're separated back in the center of the ring. 
Vargas doing a good job. Needs to knock out. I, I like that when Vargas misses a, a jab, he he keeps the hand sticking out, so he he knows the range and 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 he knows how to how how much he has to step back to avoid a hook coming back. That's really good. Well done. That's definitely from the school of Nacho Bernstein, and he's clinching this guy mm -hmm. when he comes in on the ropes and he's disrupting his rhythm. Good job. I mean, that's not something I see from Nacho fighters, but Vargas is doing it. Right? Yeah. And right now, Vargas is just pulling his is pulling his opponent down. Uh, and Kamedas, he's looking at the ref. I don't know what he want. He wants the ref to do. But I do something about it. Right. Right now, they're again they're, they're they're tied up. Right now, they're throwing arm punches. Nothing of consequence here. It's well, all. Reese pulled his head down because he's dipping his head coming in like a bull. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. Yeah, you don't want to get hit with that big ass head of his, right? Uh, oh, oh man, uh, he, uh, he almost got Vargas with that overhand right, a, a double jab landed by Vargas. He tried to lead with that uppercut. I don't know why he hasn't abandoned that yet. I, I have no idea. But maybe if Kamado was coming and ducking low, you can throw that. But when he's standing upright, I don't know why he's trying to lead with an uppercut. Um, Kamado just missed with that right hand. I think he's putting on Vargas here. Vargas grazes to the right. Vargas circling to his right. He throws a right hand. I think it grazed uh, the Japanese fighter. He's throwing to the body now, Vargas, but but Kameda holds him. The rest, I don't know why Kameda's holding. He, he's the one running out of time. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> He's not the one that so should be calling timeout right now. All right, let's see here. Or oh, he's the one that needs timeout. He needs Vargas. a knockout. That's what he needs. <laughs> Yeah, Vargas was using his backhand as a lead hand, as a range finder, trying to get a hook, <laughs> right? Now he lands an uppercut on the inside. I think he landed on the solar plexus of Kameda. 15 seconds left to go in the round. It's definitely the sloppiest round of the fight. I think both guys are getting a little This is what you call ineffective tired. pressure, man. Yeah, this is what you call ineffective pressure, man. Kameda, I think Grayson with the right hand there. Uh, he missed right there. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to give that to Kameda slightly because I don't think Vargas yeah. did enough. But how do you see that round? Vargas didn't do anything. I don't think Vargas – but I don't think Vargas has to win these next two rounds. I think he's so far ahead. Just you, my think opinion, took, man. you think he took I, off the round? Yeah, I think he took the round off, in my opinion. And I'm going to tell you this right now. I haven't given Kameda a round since the um, second round. So – <laughs> Absolutely, and, and I'll give that to come. I think I've given Kamita about three rounds in this fight, so I agree. We're pretty much in the same page. Yeah. We got 66 people in the house, 21 likes. Let's get those likes up. Throw a jab at that like button, it sets everything up. The jab is the story of the night, right? The jab, yeah, I, I agree. This is something that, like I said, for, for this, and it goes to show you for people, for people, the jab is in an abandoned art, man, and the jab is such a useful tool. You can win a whole fight just by using a jab, and it's and it's proven. It's been proven in this fight right now. Without that jab, I don't know if Vargas would be winning. I don't know if he would have ever been able to, to get down the timing. I don't know if he would ever be able to land those right hands. Only reason he started to land those right hands first thing because he straightened them out, but because he's been using a jab. You know, it makes sense. So the jab, will, the jab makes life so much easier for you. I just wish more fighters would learn it and use it. Absolutely. Man, I, I think De La Hoya never used it enough, in my opinion, and he had a great jab. Now, right now we're in round 12, el asalto numero 12. Okay, we are in round 12 right now. Vargas está ganando esta pelea. Y le pega cuando está... Look at this. He hit him in the, in the clinch, bro. Uh, Kameda hit him. He hit him, um, and he's going to get a point taken away. So if he was, so now he's definitely not going to win. Okay. That's he, dirty as hell, though, man. Yeah, yeah, he was hitting them. I don't but know. Desperate. It's called yeah. desperate. But but did he do some damage? Maybe, maybe he could get the knockout. Maybe we'll see. Was it worth it? <laughs> Kameda's coming forward. He's gonna get a little. If he wants to knock out, he's gonna have to get a little sloppy here. Okay, he doesn't have time yep. to get all too, too technical. Not saying he should be stupid, but he's gonna have to take some risk. And that's where Vargas. Will Vargas get hit with two punch combination, a hook and a right hand? Should Vargas do no, more? I'm than just hang out, on. Man. I'm willing to get knocked out. You got to be willing to get – to me, Adam, when you're way behind like this, you got to be willing to get knocked out to win. Vargas, throwing, Vargas, no Vargas throwing jabs while he's in the back foot. He almost hit, hit uh, Kameda with an uppercut there. That was the right time to throw the uppercut while Kameda was ducking low coming in. Vargas with a jab. Vargas with a right hand just over the top of the head of Kameda. Vargas with another jab. He hit a one-two. I think the second one grazed. 
by Vargas. Vargas uh, holding Kameda a minute and 35 seconds to go. The time is running out for Kameda. The sands of time. A one-two by Vargas. Kameda finally throwing jabs. I mean, we're, we're almost, uh, I guess, if he was going to throw it, better late than never. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, right hand by Vargas. We wait till the 12th round to start throwing them. When I'm way behind. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they both exchange momentarily in their holding. A minute and eight seconds left in this fight. Jab by Vargas. Jab by Vargas. Clenching. Va Vargas. Yeah, tie up. Vargas tying up is a good thing. If I'm him, I'd tie up a lot more. Mix We're 55 up. seconds to go. It's just in, uh, enough time for the Shakur fight, guys. All right. Jab by Kameda. Yep. Kameda trying to land upstairs. He stuffs his own work. 42 seconds to go in the round. Vargas with a jab. He sticks the hand out. He knows that this is Smart tying going. up. Smart. He knows he's trying to go for that haymaker. So when he misses the jab, he sticks the hand. He, he keeps the hand sticking out. Oh, they exchange for a moment. I don't know why Vargas is exchanging for. I don't. The, the right hand upstairs by Kameda. Vargas throwing that jab. No. Jab by Vargas. Kameda coming in. They're tied up. The clock is running as we speak. Kameda throws, misses. That's the bell. That's the end of the fight. I don't. It doesn't even matter. I, I think. I think I gave Kameda. I, I think I'll give him the twelfth round. But I got this. Kameda. Kameda won that round. Kameda won this round. Definitely won a round. I, I scattered nine rounds to three. Nine rounds to three. Yeah, I had eight four, to four. Vargas. So, so we're not that far off. We're, we're not that far off. Yeah. And the round I gave it to could have gone to Vargas. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, it's, it's, yeah. I think it was close. But nonetheless, it, it was a very close round. Um, and I'm just, I just want this to be uh, announced, right? So I was waiting for the announcement of this fight. You got an ESPN Plus uh yeah, I'm watching the ESPN Plus. Watch Shakira Stevenson now. In the first round just started. About a minute. Right. It's about a um a minute, minute twenty in. So. Okay. It's just not not a lot not a lot going on, man. A lot of window dressing and stuff. But nothing a not probing. a lot going on right now. A lot of probing. Not a on. lot of probing, man. Yeah. yeah. They're taking probing to another level. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could have swore, man. After the first two rounds, I was like, man, I don't know. This is gonna be a long night for Vargas. But then he figured yeah, it out, man. He made those he adjustments. Figured it out, man. Yeah, I, I said, and I, 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 I knew it. I said, man, you got to straighten out. You need to stick, stick, bro. Stick with the jab and, and throw the right, straight right hand. The straight right hand was there. He started to yeah. land it, and, and it worked. And it's just like he also shortened his hooks, which is what made it made him very effective. You know, short distance. Yeah, you know man. what I mean? If you're gonna throw the hooks, I mean, I mean, unless you got defense like, you know, Triple G or Margarito and. You know, some of the right. other guys that we've seen fight in the past, Dave Lemieux, then, of course, you can throw those shots all night. <laughs> right. At that point, <laughs> sure, you can throw it, right? I'm just waiting for the but, announcement, yeah, guys, so I could go to the other fight. But Kelly's watching it. Yeah. If I'm a Kameda, man, Kameda, somebody should talk to Kameda about getting another trainer, man, for real. I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny. He's, it's not like he can't be salvaged. He, he can actually – I think he can – I think he's a – I think he has world-class skills. Or at least talents that he just needs to be refined. If you could just convince him to be, to become a boxer with his speed, there's no reason for him to become beat as like this pressure fighter. He doesn't have to be. Right. He can box and just use his natural athleticism. He's gonna out athlete almost all of these fighters at this division. He's a he's a great athlete. Right. I agree. But he doesn't fight that way. Uh, it's it's you know may, maybe it's because you know when it, when you start at the lower level, that alone you know wins your fights. You know what I mean? Right. So so the, and they just get this idea like, well, I could do shit. I don't need to learn all this other basic shit. Like, look at what I'm doing. You know. Right. And I think it happens a lot with right. guys with a lot of power. You know, like guys that have right. knockout power, and then they run into a dude they can't knock out, and then they don't have the boxing skills. You know what I mean? Yep. So it, it's it happens a yep. lot. That that's why I'm impressed that you know. Uh, Wilder could box as well as he does. You know what I mean? Like it's it's given the power he has. Well, that's 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 where Mark Breland comes in and yep. you know gives him some skills, taught him how to jab. 
tell them how to fight off the back foot. That's something that I really wish that every fighter would try to learn. I mean, especially like I watch a lot of British fights. You know, something that seems like it's they're adverse for teaching that over there. So like, fighting, fighting off the back foot makes life a lot easier when you can fight going backwards. We can use lateral move. You can fight going side to side and not just coming forward. Coming forward means that you're going to get hit a lot more. <laughs> right. Well, you don't need to get hit a lot more. <laughs> Absolutely. Just saying, you want to be able to do it all. You want to have a diversified attack, man, because there may be, you may fight somebody, you may fight and run, against, run up against, against somebody who's a better front foot fighter than you are. So you want to be able to sit back and counter the guy. Or maybe he has faster hands. Somebody's always going to do something better than you. But they they make the right choice, by the way. Vargas did win. So what was the score? I, I wasn't able to. I had my volume down. I didn't get to hear it. I don't know. So some people in the crowd are booing, apparently. Vargas won the fight. If anybody heard it, can he post the scores on the chat, please? Po post it on the chat. And then let me go to ESPN fucking plus right away. Shit. That's why I hate the apps, bro. Because right, right now, uh, my laptop can't handle like the playing the stream and being on here at the same time. Yeah. So, it, it is what it is. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> looking at it, man. I'm sitting there looking at it. Uh, I need like a like. A I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, told, I told you, man. I'm gonna tell you, man. At Carson, man, there's a lot of casual fans who show up at the fights, and they they a lot of these fans believe. If you come forward, that means you win the fight. I'm serious. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. <laughs> so I, I, I've learned about the Carson crowd going to another fight where they're like, you guys don't know what the hell you're talking about, man. I said, yeah. they didn't like Vargas because Vargas didn't fight. And they said he, he didn't show. I'm telling you, man, I've heard this kind of crap before from other Mexican fighters fighting. Like, this dude with a pussy. Well, I'll tell you, you know, what. He didn't did stand Vargas... there and then be a warrior. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it, man. But at the same time, like, like if you're going to be a fan of a sport, you, you can't be that ignorant. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, you, you, like, like, know about your sport. Like, you know what I mean? You know, it's, it's, it's you man. can't be that ignorant about it. Man, let's say casuals, some casuals, man. Like I said, I, I learned a lot being down and going to those fights, man. There's a lot of casual fans in the, in the LA area. Hey, is man. the Shakur on, on ESPN or ESPN Plus? I'm watching on ESPN Plus right now, so he might be on ESPN, but I think he's on ESPN Plus. You can try on ESPN. I didn't try. I, I, I can't find a fight. That's why. Oh, oh it's not. It's just put on ESPN Plus. You got ESPN Plus? Yeah, I do, but like, I don't know. I can't find a fight. What's going wow. on right now in the it's fight? Right on there. Oh, it's a knockdown already. By Stevenson? <laughs> <laughs> yep, Stevenson knocked him down already. Oh, wow. Oh, down on one knee. In and around. Okay, that's the second end of the second round or third? Yep, end of the second round. Still that's early in the fight. Booing Vargas, I can't believe it. I, oh, I can't. I'm telling you how, how they get yeah. down over there. They want to see two dudes slug it out. Now, that, that, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I just seen it plenty of times, man. This dude fought like a pussy, you know. Man, fuck that man. He said he didn't fight like he was no real Mexican. I'm like, what the hell is a real Mexican fight like, man? I said, you know that Marquez didn't fight like an idiot. He timed people coming in. He was a real warrior. I said, no, you used to see them catch dudes with on knockouts through timing, right. counter punching. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you guys, what you think? They think that that these guys were trying to tell me about Marcus. They think that Marcus is straight, straight come for a fight. No, he's not. No, it's right, not. Right, right. So in their opinion, <laughs> like he lost every knockout fight. You're like, okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. These, these, man, I'm telling you that a lot of those people in there. Now there are intelligent fight fans there. They, they prefer that. They, they still prefer the come forward style, but they understand how to score a fight. Like, look, it's not the style that I prefer, but this guy won because you know he used his jab. He, Move stuck and stuck. He stuck and moved. He he was hitting and not getting hit. You know, using intelligence around the ring. But it's telling you, man. There's a lot of fans out there, man, that would have you shaking your head, man. And I'm not being funny. I'm serious. <laughs> so wow. the fans would have to be like, what the hell? 
What are you guys talking about, man? <laughs> it, it, it's just uh, it's a different way of looking at things. It, it is on regular ESPN. Oh, it's on regular ESPN? Okay. Yeah, I think um, you have like a cable provider or something like that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think I yeah, think you you're probably si you're probably signed into your provider already on ESPN, so that's why it's playing it. Yeah, I was I was already watching on ESPN on the card and just hey, is this fight on, over? On fight. What's going on? I think I mean, did, did the fight end already? That was going on. Stevenson hit. Yeah, it was borderline shot. I think they're gonna give this guy so a break. Five, five minutes, right? Okay. Guevara gets hit low, but he has five minutes to recover. I hope he doesn't pull on Namir Khan. Man, this dude, you know, secure Stevenson. Well, right now he's looking stalking forward, Stevenson. Man, Stevenson. Yeah, secure Stevenson. This dude went through like 45 opponents before he was able to actually land one guy that wanted to fight. No, this dude was scared, scared to fight him, man, and not want to fight him. He couldn't get a fight. Man, he, I mean, he had named an opponent, then another opponent pulled out. Named another opponent, another opponent you know what? pulled I, out. I, I thought, it was a joke, man. I honestly thought he was going to be a gold medalist. Oh, he got dropped, man. Zavada got dropped. Mm -hmm. Eight, nine. No, you can't do that, dude. You didn't get up on time. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> what is that? Oh, shit. What is this? What's that pillow he's got? What is this? Is it like a team or something? I don't know what this is, but the fight's over, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Stinson with a hell of a knockout. And Josh Warrington, you know, hell of a fight. There's a lot of great fights uh, for uh, Shakur Stevenson at this weight class. I'll say that. Joe Lopez, 40 ounces, says a lot of Kameda fans. Um, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Let's get, I'll have to just edit this back here. Um, great, uh, great. A lot of good fights, man. I mean, I, I think I'm losing my voice, but I call, I did a lot of play by plays. A, a lot of fights here, man. The Stevenson fight in it kind of early, but, but hey, he won. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of these, uh, a lot of, but these people said my no, it's uh, Kameda fans. No, man, if you know, if you know Carson, and I'm gonna tell you, if you guys know the makeup of Carson, look, or not just Carson, but the LA area, if you know about how some of these fans think, man, some of these fans they like guys who bring, who, can, who come, who come forward and, and let the hands go. It don't matter if you constantly come forward; they think that's winning the fight. No. <laughs> I'm serious. It doesn't matter if it's effective or not effective. If you come forward, they think that's winning the fight. Or they think you should be credited with winning the fight. I completely I disagree. Think, I okay. think you need to. <laughs> I, I think they have, have to land punching. Maybe they're watching the wrong sport, bro. Maybe they should go out and watch sumo or some shit. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> in that sport, yeah, yeah, you got to come forward and, and it's about pushing your opponent back. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. Like I said, I, I've, I've tried to discuss this with some of the fans before. I said, no. I said, what you're talking about is guys actually using skills and, you know, you know, talent in the brain, in the ring. When the guy uses lateral movement, no, I'm mean, this pussy. You should have to stand right there and trade. I'm like, why? If the other guy can't, if a guy can't meet you with natural skills, you can move around the ring and beat the hell out of the guy. Why would you do that? If you could tag him, he can't hit you. Why should I sit here and give him an opportunity to hit me? That's stupid. <laughs> I still understand that. But there's a lot of fans who believe in that. Now, I know fans I know fans over here who hate Canelo because of that. Because Canelo doesn't just sit there and trade. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, right. Canelo's yeah, one of the definition of not Mexican style. 
It's the ultimate definition of not it's Mexican. The, the, the thing is, man, it's it's a lot of Mexican Americans that think like that, man, or at least in Cali, it's by the sounds of it. I know, I know some, I know some dudes like that, you know, but a lot of them are just casual fans, man. Like they, they don't. Um, that's what I'm saying. We got there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of casual fans out here, but these casual fans they don't really understand the sport, but they go to fights. Right. <laughs> that's what they do because, like I said, it's, it's very affordable to go to to Carson. Plus, if you live in LA, it's not that long a drive. It's right off the four or five. If you if you if, so basically the four or five, four or five is like one of the main highways in LA. Four or five turns into the five. So it, it doesn't take much to get over there to Carson. If you live right off the four or five, all you do is hop on the four or five until you get to Carson and hop off. And it's literally yeah. um the the park the park is like maybe um like a mile. In a half, something like that, mile, about a mile and a quarter, something like that, away from the from the freeway. It's not that far, so so it's easy to get to that fight. It just is. So people go because it's cheap and it's a good time out. Go, I'm look, man. I, if you've never been to a boxing match, go. I'm telling you. I don't care if it's the best, oh. the biggest event or not. Boxing match is fun. You, you're, you're not that far off because look, um, when when I when I go to boxing fights here. Uh, it's not the majority, but you do hear like dudes like, "Come on, fight!" Like, the guys are fighting, but <laughs> his idea is his idea of fighting is um, just like just plant your feet and just just trade. You know what I mean? Like, like why even do anything else? Like, just do that. Yeah, you probably just watch shooting idiots on the street do that. I see that all the time. So I mean, why? Why? I mean, I I like to watch the guys who who use their brain inside the ring. Guys who I mean, you want to watch a bar fight? Go to a bar, bro. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's good. We got guys who can who can box and use a the ring. Then we have guys who will sit back and wait for guys to come in. The time, I mean, that's that's a skill. Timing is a hell of a skill. It's not something that everybody has. Some guys are far superior at it than others. Um, Floyd Mayweather was great at it. Uh, Mar Marquez is great at it. Don't those guys could time you? They were great at timing. And that's why they were able to, to, to beat as many people as they could. That counter punching is not if you to the casual fan, counter punching is considered boring. But but it's funny thing, they had this misnomer because Marquez would time guys and knock him out. <laughs> and they would assume that they had this mindset that he would just, just come forward, just let his hands go. That that's not what he did. That's literally not how he fought. I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. I see people like, oh, man, remember when he fought Pacquiao, we was coming forward. Like, no, he didn't. When he caught Pacquiao, Pacquiao ran into him. Yeah. That's why he got knocked out. He sat back and caught him coming in. Uh, man, a lot of these guys, man, like they, they <laughs> Salvador Sanchez didn't stand there and trade. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's just uh, they, they don't, they, they just don't know their own history of their own fighters, man. Um, well, actually, actually, um, a lot of times Julio Cesar Chavez seen didn't do that a lot either. Yep. I've seen plenty of fights. We were slipping all kind of punches, slipping and blocking. I was like, man, slipping, God. blocking on yeah. his back foot. Um, people think he fought the way he fought against Maldrick Tater in every fight. <laughs> like, like, no, he had to. He had to fight that way because the other guy out athleted him, had better attributes. So he like, look, I have to adjust my game plan to this dude because he's better than me in these other categories, which is what you should do. That's called using your brain. Right. Okay, in order for me to win, I have to adapt my style in order to, to beat this dude, which was the right thing. Now, I don't care for the stoppage, but he fought the right way. That's the way he, that was, he gave him his best chance to win. You can't do that. You can't fight the same style against everybody. There are times we have to make adjustments. That's when you find out who has a brain and who doesn't. And that's where that's where the, um, the cream rises to the top. Now, be <laughs> before we go, I just want to read some comments really quick. Um... Someone said, hey, Kamed, uh, Oscar says, hey, Kamel challenged him to the style he knew he could win. Nobody wants to lose. Yeah, but uh, he has to be balanced on the attack. Otherwise, it was lacking in skill. I'm not exactly sure what you're responding to, but I'm assuming you're saying, uh, you know, it just he just wasn't good enough to beat Vargas. Uh, Christian Indio says, ironically, casual fan opinions uh, uh, matter more than hardcore opinions. They're just way more of them. Gus Sandoval Stevenson could have won in the first 10 seconds of round one, but he let him live for a few seconds. Is that is the do you think he carried him, Kelly? You talking about Vargas? No, not Vargas. Uh Stevenson in his fight. Uh do I think he carried him? Uh, nah. Nah, because I mean yeah, he 
he heard him at the end of the second round. He got him out of there, man. I don't think he cared. I think he was sure. trying to uh, gauge. He was trying. He was trying to uh, find range and stuff like that, trying to figure him out in the first round. Then he caught him with a shot in the second round, dropped him at the end of the second round, and then he finished him in the third. So definitely, I mean, he looked spectacular, man. To me, that that was the goal. That's what you, that's how you want to look when you um when you're fighting for the first time in front of your hometown crowd in Newark, New Jersey. So that, that's what you. That's how you. That's the kind of performance you want to put on, so yeah. you can have more fights at home to try to attract more new fans there. Because that's that's what you want to do when you fight at home. Um, I, I, me, and now I, I want to see. I would love to see Stevenson in my opinion. I think he's ready for a title shot. In my opinion, yeah. um, I, I heard unfortunately uh, that Oscar Valdez is going to vacate his WBO title because he doesn't want to fight him. I said, "Wow, <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah." I said, "That's just that's disgusting." Um, that's no, not. No, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Do so, that. um, Valdez is going to move up to one thirty instead, then because mm. Tank's moving up, you know. Up, I, like, I want to see some of these guys fight, man. I'm, 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 so, I'm annoyed so, by guys. So, so. so Tank's moving up. You think, oh, I could go there because Stevenson's here. Yeah. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nobody there left. I mean, there. I mean, there, Miguel Burchell said if we're not going to get Burchell versus um, Tank, said he would like to fight Burchell. So hopefully Floyd will let that happen. That's a that's a great fight. Really <laughs> yes, good. yes. That, that, so, that's a fight we need as boxing fans. Honestly, facts. Facts. Yeah. So we can't get that fight, then, man. Just go up to one thirty-five, man. I mean, I, I'm I'm tired um, of Tank fighting some of the guys that's been fighting. Well, we know he's gonna blow these dudes away, man. We already know. We know going in that it's not gonna be a competitive fight. We just want to see him fight somebody that we think can at least can give him some work. I think him and Burchell is a great fight. I do think Tank will beat Burchell, but it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be very difficult for him. He's gonna have to make adjustments in that fight. And that's why I want. That's why I want to see it. Or I could be wrong, and then Burchell just wins that fight, and then we're praising Burchell. But I, I would, I would like to find out. Any good fights I missed on that ESPN card? The top rank one. Um. Yeah, um. I mean, they were all pretty much mismatches, of course. Okay. Uh, Josue and Mar Vargas, man. I mean, I missed most of the undercard stuff. To be honest okay. with you, man. Um, but yeah, yeah, I saw her Josue Vargas. He dominated and stopped his guy. So. I, mean, I don't watch a lot of undercard fights or the showcase fights. You know what I mean? Well, the top, top uh, rank, almost all their stuff, undercard fights are showcase fights. I'll tell you what, man. Like you said earlier, they're good for production, all that. And, and yeah. look, if you're a young fighter and you don't have like a big name, they're great to build you up. They're yes. great matchmaking. Yes. But, but once you're a no name, you get the fuck out of there. Okay? Yep. <laughs> you leave. You're not going to get the good fights. You know, you're not going to get big fights over there. They don't, that's not what they do over there. So I mean, if you want to go, especially if you want to make more money, then you right. definitely got to get out of there. But I, I've i spoken about this with another prospect. I'll go with Al Heyman. I'll the box out sign with Al Heyman. Like, I'm not even I would do. Immediately. I, I spoke about this. I'm going to spoke about this with an, uh, man, I look like, oh, man. And, and a lot of I, a lot of people out there, by the way, like, they, they think, like, oh, Al Heyman, he just looks after black fighters. A lot of people say that. But this, not true. Dude, this dude looked that dude, man. This dude resurrected Andy Ruiz. Okay, yep. Andy Ruiz was depressed. He was he was gonna quit boxing. He was broke. Okay, he got without Heyman. Look at him now, dude. Look at him now. He, well, even even, even if he Cruz lost the Joshua fight, even if he lost the Joshua fight, he would have been a millionaire anyway. Seven million, dude. Leo Santa Cruz named his his kid, his son, after Al Heyman. <laughs> wow, I didn't even know that. Oh, 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 I thought I thought everybody knew that. Yeah, he did. Uh, or really? Heyman, wow. Yeah, Alma Morris, Alma him, Alma Morris report. Alma Morris said he was living in his car, uh, and before he got without him and it, these, they were both with um, they were both with Golden Boy, yep. and and they were mad. He said, "Oh man, and I know there were fans who were mad, and I'm like, you really mad at him? He just told you he was living in his car. He got with Al Heyman. Al Heyman got him out of his car into a mansion, and you you hate Al Heyman? Really? Are you really? Are you kidding me? You're gonna <laughs> yeah. be mad because he left Golden Boy when he was broke with Golden Boy." I mean, I don't care, man. Look, I understand there's there's some Mexican, uh, especially in Southern California. This is more in Southern California, where yep. you guys think that okay, you don't like black folks. Okay, you don't have to like some black folks, but for you to get mad at a black dude who helped out your uh, your fellow Mexican and got him out of the park and put him into a mansion, you're gonna hate that guy. Get the fuck out of here, man. Something's wrong with you. You're a hater. Man, You're an he, absolute hater at that point, bro. She got Andy Ruiz. That look, oh. even if Andy Ruiz got his ass whooped and knocked out yep. in that fight. He would have been a millionaire either yep. way. Multi-millionaire. You know I mean? 
And he would have gotten, like, he, let's say he, get, he put up a great fight. Like, let's say kind of like the, it was like the same fight, but he was robbed or, or, or Joshua won and, or whatever, right? He would have gotten another fight. He got like three, four million for that. Like they, he was, he was put in a very, a very good position. Oh know, yeah, but, uh, uh, but now he's missing. I, I he's think Ariola made... was with him. Wasn't Ariola with him? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And Ariola was also getting ready to fight with Konoski. But I'm telling you, now, Andy Reid's going to make twenty million dollars in his next couple fights. He, he, I mean, Ariola is nowhere near as good as Andy Ruiz. No, okay? I, I don't know how he got to the top, <laughs> but I, 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 but we know, right? But everybody, you forget though, Al Heyman got Mikey Garcia out of his contract with Ty Brink. People forgot about that, and Mike, yeah. Al Heyman got him. So it just look, man, Al Heyman. I never heard any fighter except Vonis Montefiore, who went later came back and apologized, said, "Man, I didn't realize." Basically, saying he didn't realize how good he had it over there with right. PBC. And so he went over there and got with Don yeah. King, and Don King put the rock up to him. <laughs> All right. Now, it reminds me of those dudes at my job that get fired because they've called in like 10 times. Like, oh, you guys are strict. You have a – like, I, I was sick that day. It was your 11th yeah. time calling in, bro, like in, in right. five months. And then they, they go somewhere else like, oh, fuck, I'm on the job right now. I've been calling once like they're on my ass. You know, and th that's how Vonis was. Like, he didn't realize right. how good he had it. You know, yep. he just did it. It's like, I, I bet you Chavez Jr. thought he had a hard life at one point. You know what I mean? <laughs> he probably still thinks he does. He's probably like, oh, this is, it's hard being the son of Chavez. Like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. You know, it's hard waking up to silk sheets every day, man. It sucks. <laughs> I'm saying I'm, I'm rich. It fucking sucks being rich, man. You know, I, I mean, you know, I heard, um, who was that? I know this is, we're not talking about politics. There was somebody yeah. on Fox News that said, Man, it's hard being rich. You know, said you know if you if you could, you said you 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 should try being you know a a, a billionaire one day and see how hard it is. But okay. yeah, let's trade. I don't. I'm not trading. I'm not switching back either. You have to say it right now. Just let you know when we make the switch. <laughs> try being a billionaire just so you could see how hard it is. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I was like, let's switch. You can have my lifestyle, and I'll take Dude, yours. Dude, you can I do whatever you. the fuck you want, bro. Like, well, what yes. do you mean it's hard? <laughs> right, and, and whatever problems you have, I have them too. Like it's just not, it's not, it's not like you change, like you exchange something, right? I can buy. Like, my you know how they say, away. like I love when people are like, oh, well, money doesn't buy love, right? Right. Okay, let's say there's a girl that doesn't love you as a billionaire. She's not gonna love you when you're broke either, right? Nope. So, so it doesn't matter. Like, give me the billion, I'm fine. Yeah, uh, give me the billion, and I'll um just go date a bunch of Instagram models, and you know, get rid of them when I'm tired of them, move on. Yeah, I mean, shit. You ever seen some of these old dudes, ugly as shit, can get the, like the hottest yeah. fucking models and shit? Well, we know what it is. It's the money. Right. <laughs> but, but man, with that said, Kelly, before we roll out, do you have any final words? Oh man, man, thanks for letting me come on, man. This is fun. <laughs> I'm saying, I I enjoyed this fight. I enjoyed uh, all the fights today, man. Uh, I think Daniel Dubois is, uh, is the truth, man. Uh, I understand. I think I think he's about a year. Maybe a little bit longer away from being able to compete with Anthony Joshua. Actually, uh, I, I truly do. I think he's getting a lot better. I think he's been moved along at the right pace. Shout out to I don't care for Frank Warren. I don't care for any promoter, but shout out to Frank Warren for moving his fighter along the right pace and not yep. trying to rush him and, and put him on a path to to fail. Which um, what Eddie Hearn did. If Eddie Hearn would have did the same thing with to Joshua, with Joshua that uh, Frank Warren's doing with um, Dane Dubois. Uh, I don't think we would have the same problem. But then again, it looks like Daniel Bryce better trainers than Anthony Joshua, too, because I don't see him making the, the same mistakes that Joshua makes currently, even right now. But I still would like to see Daniel Bryce move on and um and get an American trainer and ask him. Maybe he'll, he'll he still looks a little on the robotic at times himself, too, but yeah. he looks still looks more fluid than Joshua. But I think um, an American trainer can actually. Uh, take him to the next day, to the next step in my opinion. I think Daniel Dubois. He, he looked a little. Be, I mean, he looked a little basic to me. A little too yeah. much jab, jab, cross, and yeah. you know, it's just, it was a little basic. Right. But I mean, uh, the athleticism's there. You know, what I mean, yep. uh, uh, you know, he passes the eye test to a certain degree where I could say he could improve certain things. Yes, in a good way. Like, like he has time. You know what I mean? So he's a British champion right now. I, I think. I don't think he should keep and fighting. He just domestically. turned twenty-one, and he just turned twenty-one. Yeah, but He's I don't want him to fight domestically, though. I think me neither. Me neither. 
He can you know, come over here and get more sparring, which he has done. Like he has come you, over here. Like, if you're the you're if you're the British champ, you already conquered Britain. Okay, it's, no. it's not too uh, you know go go. It's you got to fight some of these um, American fighters. I think you know. Well, they, I heard two names for Joe Joyce right now. Uh, word now uh, one now. Um, um, and Joe Joyce lost. Caballel or Caballel or, or Dubois next for him. He can't beat either one of them dudes, bro. <laughs> Joe, no. I'm talking about Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce can't beat no. either one of those. Yeah, I don't think so either. Joe Joyce to me is a knockout just waiting to happen, bro. Like, yeah. He's Dubois lucky. Brian Jennings is known for not having punchy power. Yep. You know what I mean? And it was yep. popping a head back, you know, and, and at one point he heard him. He and heard the him ref, times the, the ref conveniently stopped it, right? <laughs> right? To 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 tell him that he's hitting too low. Those shots are borderline shots, bro. Yep. You know, and he did it twice, and then he did it to uh, Joe Joyce, but to buy him time, man. I did this, and and then they wonder why Andy Ruiz doesn't want to go fight over there. Of course, right? it, you know. But I saw, he, I mean, Jennings hit hit Joyce with a right hand, and and his face. I didn't like the reaction to it that his face made when he got hit with that right hand. I'm like, man, this whoa. dude get hit by Wilder or Josh. Was he going to sleep, man? Yeah, he piped out. Oh, what was that? I got hit with a hammer, bro. That was Giant, Brian Jennings, bro. Like, like chill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's coming, bro. It's I mean, coming, it's, man. It's still, I mean, I get it. It's a heavyweight division. All guys hit hard to a certain degree. I get it. But still, mm -hmm. it's still Brian Jennings. No, right. but this guy's getting ready to step up to world level, man. That's what they're getting ready to step him up to world level. He's getting the gear and he get knocked out, man. It's yeah. coming. It's definitely coming. You can't keep him safe. Once you step up the world level, you can't keep you can't keep him safe no more. You can't. There's nowhere to hide him now. He wants to compete for a title. He's going to turn 34 in October. Uh, he, the guy, I mean, the guy's older than Deontay Wilder, man. He's older than Deontay Wilder. He, I mean, that's and that that tells you something right there. The dude is older than Deontay Wilder, man, and he can't. He's not even remotely in the same galaxy as Wilder, man. Uh, this dude is gonna have major problems, man. Once he um, once he really steps up, uh, he steps up. He fights anybody in the top fifteen to get knocked out, man. In my opinion, anybody in the top fifteen potentially knocks him out, and and that's why I said the cop. I don't think he could beat Cobb I L. Um, I don't I don't see him beating, and I definitely don't see him beating Dan Dan Dubois, who I could, I think I think is a top fifteen fighter now. I just don't think he should be competing for a title quite yet. Don't rush him too far, but he's definitely a top fifteen heavyweight right now. Uh, I don't think I don't know if I don't think Joe Joyce could beat um uh, FL John right now. I'm serious, and he ain't even really stepped up yet. Well, he had just stepped up. He stopped. He just stepped up in his last fight. Like anyone who's gonna hand. clip him with a right because he's open to the right hand. Yep. And I remember I called it. Like I called it because I was like, he's open to the, even even against Jennings, the left side of his face was fucked up. You know what I mean? But uh, I see a lot of people in the chat asking about the fight. This is what you do. You subscribe to my channel. You hit that bell button, that notification. That way, next time there's a fight, you'll get a notification, and you can listen in. Because I understand Saturday night, sometimes we're not home to watch these fights, but these styles got you covered. Uh, Callie, I'd like to have you on at some other point, man, some other fights, some of these play-by-plays. Oh, oh it's, it's all good, man. And Yeah, he did. He, um, You know, uh, with Tom, F.L. Jabba, he knocked out Amir Mansoor in the yep. second round. Then he knocked him in, 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 in the second round. So he has stepped up his last two fights, and that's a good thing, man. He's starting to step up the competition. Uh, I don't know who this guy is getting ready to fight, though. This guy, some guy named Ali Aaron Demarizon or whatever the hell his name is. I never heard of this dude before. Um, I should ask Mr. Boxing today, too. Is Oh, the guy's from Germany. Uh, born in Turkey, but uh, grew, grew up in Germany. Oh, man. Oh, God. I don't know who this dude is, man. This is somebody he's going to destroy in, like, one or two rounds, bro. In my opinion, man. <laughs> like, I have a feeling this dude has. Oh, he has a 91% knockout rate, though. Well, who has he fought? Oh, man. He fought a guy that was. He's got the look, first... too, Jaiva. Like, he's got an intimidating uh, kind of presence. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to get. I guess he's going to get tested in this. But I guess this guy's supposed to have some type of power. But, I mean, it doesn't look like this dude is fighting nobody, man. He has at least guys running that recognizable names that I can see. Um, Two of his last four opponents, one of the guys was 4-8-0. Oh. Um, the other guy was 8-1-0. and oh, And his last opponent was 19-2-0. and oh. Anand Rezovic. These guys got to fight uh, American fighters, bro. And I'm, I'm not trying to say that there's an abundance of, he of great heavyweights in America. Right. But the way they're trained, 
because all our great athletes in, at heavyweight are in the NFL and, you know, NBA, right. you know, but the ones that we do have, the way they're trained, man, all those little tricks they do, like uh, how they fight on the inside, how they rough you up. You got to get used to that. You might as well do that against a lower yep. level opposition. But but I you'll learn. You'll learn a lot of those tricks, man. Like it'll it'll make you a better fighter. Like Joshua, to me, just he doesn't even know he doesn't even know how to clinch. Oh, I, mean, I don't know if you heard about some so of the, the stuff only reason that, I, the only reason Klitschko knew is because he got Emmanuel Stewart. He got an American man. trainer, and he, he, then nobody could knock him out after he learned how to fucking clinch. Man, did you did you man? Let me tell you some stuff that I heard about Joshua. I heard that Joshua spars nothing mostly like at least sixty percent of his sparring partners are amateurs. And not just that, he's been dropped by several amateurs. Yeah. Mm. No, for real. These are this is some of the stuff that I, I like. Oh my God. Why are you sparring amateurs at this time? You're a world level fighter. Why are you sparring well, amateurs? Why are you getting knocked down and knocked out by amateurs? That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's like, What's man. going on here? <laughs> the heavyweight champion of the world, bro. There's no way Ali gets knocked out by amateurs when he was the heavyweight <laughs> champ. And just you shouldn't even be competitive against an amateur, man. First, I wouldn't even spar an amateur because that doesn't help me right. at all. I mean, the amateur, it doesn't help me. Amateur has a long way to go, still learning. Um, yeah. as I, I, would, I would like to spar, you know, um, prospects. Do, do you know the Chavez de Loya story? The Chavez? No, no, no. What? Tell me about it. So Chavez was a young kid and Mosley was a young kid, right? Right. And they, they were, uh, Chavez going to have a fight in L.A., and um, they asked Chavez, you know, hey, do you mind, you know, sparring with these, you know, young kids, you know? Right. And I said, okay, fine. We need work anyway. Because Chavez right. would get like three like three rounds of, of for every sparring partner, you know? Right. So we need dudes anyway. So so bring them in right. here. Uh, first, he sparred with Mosley. They did some work. And then uh, he sparred with Deloya. But Deloya was fighting like it was a fight. Like Deloya was like, he thought it was like an actual fight, not a sparring right. session. And uh, so they go back after round one. And uh, uh, Chavez's corner is like, "Hey, can you tell your dude to calm down? It's just, it's, you know, you know, it's, it's just sparring, right?" Right. And um, okay, fine. Deloya still he's trying to knock his head off, right? He's go, he's going at Chavez, wow. and then uh, so they go back to the ring, uh, to the corner. I'm sorry. And um, uh, uh, the story goes that. And it's been confirmed by Chavez and the lawyer, but basically said, hey, uh, did this kid tell him to calm the fuck down or I'm going to show him what's up, right? Right. Like, like if he's going to, if he wants to fight like that, I'll fight like that. But he's, he, he and, and Chavez is thinking, this is a teenage kid, you know what I mean? Right. So right. they're like, at first they were going to be like, no, no more sparring, but they were like, eh, but do you really want to stop sparring a kid? It's going to look like he beat you up, right? So his right. trainer just told him, you know what? Fuck it. Show him why you're the champ, like right now. You sure? Like, yeah, yeah. Show him why you're the champ. Went in there, dropped him on his ass right away. Bam! Dropped the lawyer on his ass, <laughs> and then they told him to get the fuck out. Right? Wow! <laughs> you know, but that's how the story goes. But that that that's that's how. So champ that's why Os De La Hoya's always hated him because I I heard that Os De La Hoya back going back then when they fought. Yeah. Heard that Os De La Hoya had a um he had a he despised absolutely despised um. Uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, man, he hated him, hated his guts. So it makes sense. There's always yeah. been that. I've, I've heard that. I heard that a long time ago. That uh, I still hated him, and I heard that. I heard it was just because he was jealous. But now that makes sense. That may have something to do with his hate towards Julio Cesar Chavez too. That I mean, it could be. I mean, I, now he says that he was always his hero and like all that. You know what I mean? But so he changed um, his mind now. I, 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 I think it was frustration that that. Chavez getting all this love, and, and he was getting like this. There was this like animosity towards him because he beat the legend. You know what I mean? Yeah, he beat um, him up past his prime, and he beat the shit out of him too. And and, yeah. I, and and he was he was proud of what he did, man. What is like and people are like, man, fuck you, man. And, you know, like, they they basically you know like if he would have took it uh, easier on him or something like that, but the way he just went in there and dogged him and just kind of humiliated him, man, was kind of fucked up. Hey, but, before you go, somebody posted in the chat here, but who who do you got? White or Rivas? Uh man, um man, that's, I want to go with Rivas because Dillian White is just talking about everybody except Rivas. He's talking about Wilder, talking about Fury. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead with I, I understand why um Dillian White why they picked they chose him. 
But I'm going to go with Revis for the upset, man. As Dillian White it just doesn't seem to be concentrated on this fight at all. Yeah. Man, well, I'm going to add to roll, bro, because I'm, I'm getting my, my girl's texting me right now. Like, but, uh, she's like, you've been on this shit all day. Like, you know, but anyway. Um, yeah, my girl, my girl is saying things that you're not you're going to ignore me all day. All right. I'm like, hey, you know where I'm at. Okay, you go to YouTube. Uh, but um, yeah, th thanks for joining me, man. We got to do this again uh, for oh, sure. No problem, man. No I'm, problem, doing, man. I'm doing this for the hooker fight with uh, Ramirez, and I'm doing it for the Pacquiao fight in Thurman for sure. I'll, I'll um, be back, man. I'll definitely be back, man. Um, if there's another heavy one, the next heavyweight fight, too. Yeah, yeah um, for sure. When I would come up, too, because I know I missed the boxing today. He wanted to get a link for, for a fight, so. Man, if we do something right. again, if another heavyweight fight, come on, I'll make sure. Send me a link, and I'll make sure to get it to him. I'll Hell give him yeah. a call and let him know. Yeah, we get most, him on, man. Most definitely. These play-by-plays are fun, man. They, they, yes, they, they really are. are. And, and I, I think the reason I do it is because I want people to get a different voice because you can't – there's too many agendas on the networks. There's, there's just too many of them. You know what I mean? Agreed. Yes, Vargas did win, Francisco. Francisco, yeah, Vargas won. He um he out he outboxed him, man, and got booed for outboxing. Kameda, man, which is just what he, what he should have done. It makes right. sense to outbox somebody. If you could outbox somebody, why yeah, the, the hell would you go in there and slug it out? <laughs> I mean, the sport's called boxing, you know, but, but anyway, <laughs> it's not called slug it out. It's just changing the name of the sport, slugging. No, people like that tough man fighting, man. I'm telling you, people people hey, enjoy it, that, man. It works for some fighters, right? Yep. And, and, and to me, what makes this, it's, it's like Street Fighter. Remember that old video game? <laughs> Yep, I remember all, Street Fighter, yeah. They, they all had, like, different styles. You know yep. what I mean? That's what made it fun. Ooh, why you? <laughs> the, the, the different styles made it fun, man. If everybody had the same style, the sport would get boring so fast. Yeah. Like, it's, it's not even funny, right? Of course. But of course. And that, but, that's, but, that's, but that's the point, though, is what, uh, what we, what we, what we, what we want to see. I want to see different styles. Styles make fights. Yep. Mean, certain styles, you understand that it may pleasing. Uh, fights, but I mean, you know it, it is what it is. You're supposed to go, go in there and win. Is the, uh, as uh, the ideal for you to, is to win the fight by any means necessary, which is what Winky Wright did, which which is what um, Tyson Fury does most of the time. You yeah. know, you should. It's not about Look, should I go and, in there and, and make the fight man. more exciting for you, or should I win? Go ahead. But it, and it's more satisfying. Like uh, this is what I'll say before I go. Right. I've been saying that for 30 minutes, but uh, um, sometimes boxing talks so good, you know, but. Just the satisfaction, the satisfaction that you get. Like, let's say you like a slugger, you like a guy that comes right. forward, right? And a dude's like moving around the ring and it's frustrating. You know, your favorite fighters coming forward. Right. Like, is it not more like? Don't you get more satisfaction when that guy catches up to the boxer and knocks him out? Yeah, like, you know that that's that you get more satisfaction out of that. Right. That, that's what makes it exciting. That like he's out the ring, going yeah. to the body, breaking down the boxer. They're like, okay, he's starting to break him down now. He's starting yep. to catch him. He's starting to land shots. Oh, he caught him. Oh, he caught him. He, he put yep. him on his ass. He put him on his ass. Absolutely. Get him yeah, you know, yeah, it is. It's, it's exciting, man, to see it. But it's also exciting to see um, if a boxer can, can – and, man, you got one guy who's yep. been knocking everybody out, be throwing everybody and get some boxing and just uses his style, yep. slick, and it slips a bunch of shots and counters and then goes on to win a 12-round decision by our boxing. I mean, just, it's different. You you see that in boxing all the time. Yeah, because maybe the replay yeah. isn't as exciting, but while you're watching, yeah. you know that this guy has a one-punch knockout power. Yep. And it could be over at any moment, you know? So it, it's – and when he gets close, he's about to cut off the ring, and you're like, whoa! And then, you know, it's just – it's just that's what makes the sport special, right? Yep. And that's why I do the play-by-play. I try to tell a better story than the dudes on TV. Yes, it, it was. It, was it a good win? Oh, it was a good win. Um, Jesus, Jesus Fernandez. Yes, it was. A, it was a good win. I thought that Var Vargas did a really good job of using his jab. Um, you know, staying controlling distance, and trying to you know using lateral movement and, and following up with the right hand, mixing in hooks and uppercuts and going to the body. Uppercuts weren't quite as effective, but uh, but the hooks to the body later on in the fight started to have an effect. Uh, he started to land those. At first, he was missing those hooks to the body. Right and uppercuts to the body, but he but he did a really good job of of using his jab, which was the right thing to do. He stayed behind the jab. He continued to leave that jab out there and control distance. Something that Kameda never figured out. He never figured out how to get beyond the jab, and and one and absolutely wanted to fight. And on top of that, too, he wasn't a sitting target. He continued to move 
you know, you know, st step to the left, step to the right, couple steps, you know, st couple steps to the left, couple steps to the right, you know, step back. Just, you just, just moving around the ring, man. It's, man. It's, it was a beautiful, it was, it was a beautiful uh, thing, man. It's probably a beautiful I, fight. I, I, I'm gonna have a field day with a lot of these Kameda fans because they're already commenting on my last video that I, 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 <laughs> I, this, this is gonna be great. I already know it. Uh, but Kelly, I do gotta run, man. Thank you so much for joining me, bro. He was robbed. No, it's good. <laughs> you know what's coming, man. Definitely. <laughs> But all that's right, all man. fun, man. Let's definitely do it again, man. I, 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 like I said, I enjoy your channel, man. I think you got one of the best channels out there, man. And I appreciate listening to you and your podcast, man. Every, every, um, well, Monday through Thursday, I should say, man. Most so, definitely. man, keep doing your thing, brother. And keep voting on those polls, everybody. Uh, I am out of here. This is D Style Boxing, and for Cali, keep it boxing. I'm out. Don't.